Ogmar Bogle in their 2-0 home defeat to Newport. Both clubs say the actions are abhorrent and thanks fellow supporters for reporting it. And half-time at the final of the Rugby World Cup and it's South Africa on course for a fourth crown. The box lead 12-6. We'll have updates throughout the second half. Talk Sport News. Israel's Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu says his country's entered the second phase of its war with Hamas with troops on the ground in Gaza and Hastings Priory Meadow Shopping Centre had to be evacuated today because of flooding as more heavy rain hits the UK. Talk Sport weather with Quick Fit. Don't let car troubles get in the way of your journeys this autumn. Visit your local centre or quickfit.com for tyres, servicing and batteries so you can drive away happy every time. Heavy and thundery showers move northeastwards overnight. Some flood risks have been issued across the country. On DAB Digital Radio and 1089 and 1053 AM Fight Night with Adam Catterall on Talk Sport. Roll up, roll up, all the fun of the fair. It's where boxing meets MMA. Fury versus Ngannou on Talk Sport. Your name's not Dan, you're not coming in. No Talk Sport. Is covering any fights of Tyson anymore. Your name's not Dan, you're not coming in. Talk sport. will never have anything to do with Tyson again. You're not banned. Who says you're banned? I don't know where you get this banned from. Your name's not Dan, you're not coming in. If someone's got an issue with fighting Garnet, then I don't really bother to. The Gypsy King Tyson Fury! Talk sport not welcome at your They're not, they're not welcome. Your name's not Dan, you're not coming in. Tyson Fury is still the WBC! Heavyweight champion of the world. He's probably the best heavyweight out there at the minute. This fight really has piqued my imagination. Not tonight. You're not on the list. Name's not down. We're not coming in. But we're still going to talk about it this evening. Welcome to TalkSport. This is Fight Night. I'm Adam Catterall. Pleasure as always to be in your company. And it's a pleasure to be alongside these two. The one, the only Omen himself, Mr. Spencer Oliver. And the Ron for Bull is in the house this evening. Mr. Johnny Fisher. How are you, mate? Great to be here, mate, with you two. And, uh, yeah, looking forward to seeing what's on offer tonight. Well, we'll have a little bit of fun because, of course, there's a fight on this undercard that I've no doubt you've got one eye on, yeah. with it being for a British title, with you being the Southern Area Champion, obviously moving through these ranks, yeah. eyes on these big boys, Adelaide taking on Wood. They're going to keep you across that as it does play out uh, in Riyadh. And, of course, we will head towards uh, that main event of Tyson Fury and Francis Ngannou. And in a moment, I will address that little ditty that our production team have made there, where our name is allegedly not down and we are not coming in to the party uh, this evening. Uh, I will get stuck, to, stuck into everything that has been said on social media throughout the whole course of the week and various bits and bats that have gone back and forth uh, on Talk Sport. But we'll start, I think, on a positive note, because as a fight promotion, Spence... Again, we're not on the ground, but as a fight promotion, consuming it through social media, consuming it through uh, radio and television, I'm blown away. I'm, uh, I'm absolutely blown away uh, with what has been on offer this week, the amount of money and exuberance and famous faces that are on the ground for what is about to happen this evening. If that is the start of things to come for sensational heavyweight fights that hopefully we're going to get in the not-too-distant future, Deal me in. Absolutely. I mean, look, Adam, we always knew it was going to be a massive event, didn't we? We knew what the Saudis were looking to do, what they were looking to bring. I mean, look, the who's who of boxing, current boxers, ex-boxers, legends of the sport, they're all there. You know, not just boxers. You've got footballers, you've got tennis players, you've got everybody as a part of this event. And that's what it was always going to be. It was always going to be a huge event. I think that they've done a spectacular thing out there in Saudi Arabia for this. Hmm. Is this something that uh, lights your candle? Johnny, obviously, would you get nervous fighting uh, with Mike Tyson uh, watching on and uh, and the greats? Um, it's a it's a it's a nerve wracking thought, yes. But when you get into that ring, and Spencer will know all of that stuff becomes mm. background noise. And yeah, it is a great spectacle. It's great to see them all lining up for that photo with them famous fighters from the past and present. But for me as well, yeah, it's great the event and the uh, the promotion. But part of me is still quite traditional in the sense that a great fight in London or a great fight in Vegas. Yeah, that still that tipples my fancy just as much as sure. Saudi Arabian fights, if not more. I understand where you're coming from, John. Where you said there, like you know, it's that. I think it would be the excitement of boxing just in front of you, the people, the childhood yeah. heroes that you grew up watching. Because oh. you know, as a young man. You inspire to be these yeah. sort of people and you see all the famous faces there like Roberto Duran, Sugar Ray Leonard. You know, these guys were like your your heroes. All of a sudden, you're rubbing shoulders with them. And I think champions 
which this young man over, over, across the room from me, Southern Air heavyweight champion at the moment, but mm. I believe he's going to go on to bigger and better things. I think champions feed off that sort of stuff. And I think so boxing in the, in, the, in the bright lights, in the spotlight, in front of those sort of people... Is um yeah it would be a pleasure. We, we yeah. I don't think we've seen it to this scale before. I remember as a kid when you're a little bit starry eyed, right, and you're and you're into your Rocky Mount Balboa films, mm. and obviously that coincides with Mike Tyson coming through and the big Las Vegas nights against. Oh, I mean we luckily growing up as a kid in the nineties, good heavyweight scene, lots of top quality fights for me to get excited mm-hmm. about. And you looked at the front rows there and the star-studded people, the, the pop stars and the movie stars that all wanted to be in attendance for all these things that in Las Vegas or, or New York. This has kind of taken this to the next level this week. Absolutely, man. This is like, like as a star-studded event, this is by far, by far the biggest that I've ever seen. You know, like crossing, you know, not just with the boxers that are there. You know, you, I, I saw Riddick Bow was there, Lennox Lewis was there. Do you know what I love about this sport as well? Johnny, I think you're going to agree with me this. It's the ultimate gladiatorial sport where you get in there, like Lennox Lewis, Riddick Bow, they had that long-reigning feud, didn't they? <laughs> yeah. Goes right back to... Put the WBC it? belt in the bin, did Riddick, didn't Absolutely. When they boxed in the uh, 1992 Olympics, wasn't it? Was it the Seoul Olympics they boxed 1992? Eight. Or was it 88? 88? Or was it 88? Well, yeah. anyway, yeah, yeah. Where, whenever it was, they had that, that fight. Lennox Lewis come out victorious. We always thought we was going to see it as professionals as well. Riddick Bowe went on to have a great career. <coughs> Lennox did as well. We threw the WBC belt, as you rightly said, into the bin. It's a fight that we never got. But there was genuine dislike. Hate yeah. is probably a strong word, but genuine dislike yeah. between those two mm. for many, many years. Then you see him when it's all done. It's wrapped up. It's finished. And... You, you've got that moment that only you two have shared before and yeah. it's like something magical about that and it brings you closer than probably the normal friendship. And boxing in general, um, heavyweight boxing especially, it's sort of, all of the sporting world, the whole world sort of stops mm. to have a, have a look. So this event, slightly different in a sense, it's the crossover of two different disciplines altogether. That adds that little bit extra to it and yeah, people do stand and stop, the world stops mm. to see things like this. Mm. Is, is there any jeopardy for you in this tonight for Tyson? Of course, there always is. It's a cliche big man can punch but for me I would be overly surprised massively surprised if it's anything else than a Fury win in, within a few rounds Concur with that? Yeah absolutely do you know what excites <laughs> me about this that because obviously Francis Ngannou is an overwhelming underdog going into this one and we all love his story yeah. you know where he's come from to how he got to him we, we can cover that later on in the show but like you know, it's such an inspirational man and to become UFC heavyweight champion is, you know, an accolade on its own. Yeah. Now, could you imagine, boys, could you imagine if he pulled it off? Like, if he pulled it off. And I, can, I, and, I genuinely and, and, can't see it. And, no, not that's tonight. Why, that's why not it's tonight. a little bit but exciting. But that's why it's a little bit exciting because yeah. mm. you just go, I'm with you, and right, 99.9% sure and that's pretty much as sure as you could be yeah. that Tyson Fury wins his fight and he does pretty much as he wants. He goes out there first round, <laughs> boxes Southpaw. Second round goes out there, boxes um, Orthodox. Then he goes out there and he one decides leg. to go on the front foot. Yeah. Leg. yeah, one leg. He might come out of a blindfold in round four. You never know with Tyson Fury. He's one of those guys, but... Yeah. For me, he can pretty much end this fight pretty much as and when he wants because it's a totally dis- different discipline and Tyson Fury's discipline. Mm. But it's that little thing where you go, could you imagine it would be the biggest upset in boxing history? Forget Buster Douglas, Mike Tyson, Tokyo, two, 1990. Forget that 40-1 mm. to one underdog. Like, that. this would blow that out of the water. And what we're talking like, Tyson Fury can't think like we're thinking for a split second. He cannot switch off. He has to go into this preparing like any other fight, any mm. championship fight, because that is the only feasible way if Fury doesn't turn up as his normal self to, to beat mm. him. If he doesn't, he's a big bloke and Fury uh, and Gano can obviously whack. And any man over 15, 16 <laughs> stone hitting you on the chin, trust me, you're going to feel it. <laughs> Um, well, we've also got that. That's the main event. And we've got uh, the uh, British title fight, the unprecedented uh, British, ta- British title fight taking place not on British soil, which is uh, a unique yeah. event, of course. Uh, David Adelaide and Fabio Wardley are going to be going at that very, very shortly. Johnny's going to be keeping his eye across that, no doubt. And we will keep you up to date with that on Talk Sport. But when the show kicked off, you will have heard a little bit of a ditty there about us... Uh, uh, our names not being down and not coming in. And this has been going back and forth uh, throughout the whole course of the week on very social media platforms, YouTube channels that are in the boxing space, asking various members of Team Fury about a spat, a feud, and their uh, the dislike of uh, things that have been said on TalkSport. Now, we've had Frank Warren, obviously, on uh, TalkSport this week, who 
appease that situation. He was on with White and Jordan a little earlier on in the week. He said that that's not the case. But Team Fury uh, are a little disgruntled with two individuals that are connected to TalkSport. One of those individuals is me. So I want to take it upon myself to address that situation now and hopefully put it to bed in some way, shape or form and justify some of the things uh, that Team Fury have been offended by. Um, like I said, they've taken offence to some criticisms that I've had of Tyson over the last few years. I watched an interview uh, a little earlier on this week uh, with Spencer Brown, who's Tyson's manager, and he made reference to the term ducking. Um, Frank Warren also made that reference as well. And they also made reference uh, to me asking the question whether Tyson Fury uh, is a myth and that I profess to be Tyson Fury's friend. Now, he said, this is Spencer uh, Brown, he said that I should be ashamed of myself for the way that I've been carrying on over the last couple of years. Now, I respect Spencer immensely. Uh, he gave a considered and articulate interview, and I thought um, he was, you know, he, although I fully understand his points towards me, um, I've got to absolutely disagree and obviously come on TalkSport to kind of justify my thought processes over the last, uh, last couple of years. Um, first and foremost, regarding the friendship thing, I've never professed to be Tyson Fury's friend. I am one of the very few people uh, that reneged on the opportunity to be at that Wet Republic um, after party, after uh, he uh, demolished Deontay Wilder the first time. Plenty of other media colleagues went to that and enjoyed themselves. I thought that it blurred the lines and would uh, cross the boundaries of uh, our professional relationship. So I turned that down. So I've never professed to be a friend, just a professional work working relationship of which I've thoroughly enjoyed over the last few years. Now, regarding my questioning him of him being a myth, the actual proper terminology that I used, and I'm not going to deny any of this because you've, you've called me out on it, Spencer. So the actual proper terminology of what I said is, is the proper fighting man a myth? That's exactly what I said. Now, it's a question. It's not a conclusion. And there is a difference between that. If you've taken offence to a question, that's on you. It's not on me. It's not a conclusion that I came to. I was asking a question to the audience. Now, the reason why I've come to that situation is this. Tyson Fury claims to be the greatest heavyweight of our generation. His team profess that he is the greatest heavyweight of our generation. As of many of the fan base that follow the sport, they will say the exact same thing. My question is, how do you come to that conclusion? If it's just eye test, fair enough. I think a lot of people would agree with that. But for me, when you're talking about greatness, you've got to have numbers, facts and figures to be able to back up your argument. Now, here's my argument to counter you being upset with me. Tyson Fury has only been in six world title fights. He's had 34 professional bouts, six of them world title fights. Three have come against the same bloke. He's defended the title on three occasions, twice against fellas that he's previously beaten. Tonight, he fights someone that he's making their professional boxing debut. There is a guy in his era that has had 12 heavyweight world title fights. He's defended on seven separate occasions and has unified the division against the, another undefeated champion. I personally think that asking whether Fury is a myth or the proper fighting man is a myth at this particular time is absolutely relevant. I'm also confident that in time, he'll answer that question. But as of today, it's absolutely relevant because numbers do not lie. Journalism is about saying things that most people don't necessarily want you to say. Everything else is just PR. And we've witnessed that in absolute spared loads in Riyadh throughout the whole course of the week. Shills and PR merchants absolutely churning out ridiculous narratives, mainly against TalkSport and my colleagues. Tonight, the WBC world champion is being allowed to fight a boxing debutant. The WBC is justifying it by saying Tyson tried to make other fights. My argument is that he did not try hard enough. Now, let's look at that ducking accusation that Frank brought up with uh, Simon Jordan, which Simon's already answered, and that you have mentioned in that particular piece, that interview that I watched. I, I'm going to own this. I have absolutely said that Tyson has gone out of his way to prevent certain fights from happening at certain times. I've also asked the question whether he really wants to fight Usyk. I have asked these questions and come to these conclusions because of what Tyson himself has said and done. Let's go back to the AJ negotiations. Now, my understanding is that there's been three separate windows for that fight to materialise. Tyson is on record, and it was on, in my, I believe that it was on your homecoming tour that you organised, Spencer Brown, that he was on stage saying that he would fight AJ for free. He wants all the tickets to be free. Everybody can come in and enjoy themselves for free. He will do that. 
A couple of days after that tour that he did with you, he went to his own social media and he absolutely clarified that he will absolutely fight Anthony Joshua as long as everything is free. Insinuating that Anthony Joshua has to do it for free as well. Okay, fair enough. We've got a base. He is prepared to do that fight for free. No problem whatsoever. Now, let's go back to these three occasions where this fight could have happened. First one, I believe that the fight was absolutely nailed on, but arbitration kicked in. Tyson had to go off to fight Deontay Wilder for a third time. We then, of course, got the situation where Anthony Joshua went to go and fight Alexander Usyk. The third time, Anthony Joshua and his team shut down the negotiations and said, we're not interested. Okay, they walked away from you. But the second time, that's the key thing, because the second ask of Anthony Joshua to fight you came off the back of Anthony Joshua losing twice to Alexander Usyk. We all saw the state that he was in off the back of those two defeats. You were in retirement. Tyson Fury was in retirement. And he came out of retirement and asked Anthony Joshua if he fancied a dance. Now, what happened in that particular moment was then a couple of days later, we had a conversation about purse splits. I thought we wanted to do it for free. We're now talking about a 60-40 split. So the negotiations for this fight, in my opinion, should be incredibly easy because you had a base point of zero. You were prepared to do it for nothing, but now you're going to get 60% of a really big multi-million pound pot. Wicked. Let's get this done. Let's get this over the road. The conversations I had at that time with parties on both sides of that camp were very positive. Listen, man, this is the best place we've been in. I think we're going in the right place. This fight is going to happen. Wicked. I'll sit back and wait for this date to come through. Then, all of a sudden, out of absolutely nowhere, we had a mythical date set by one man, Tyson Fury. Anthony Joshua's got till five o'clock on Monday to sign this contract. He didn't negotiate that with any of his team. He didn't tell any of his team, and you know that. He just came out on social media and said, five o'clock, AJ, on Monday, sign that contract or it's off. Now, we've got a Netflix documentary which kind of solidifies this at home with the Furies. All the fight fans have watched it. Episode seven, deadline day for AJ. 29 minutes into the episode, this is what he said. Robert, with less than three minutes to go, have we heard anything on the contract signed? What George asked for, leave it till close of play tonight before midnight. So no. Five o'clock's cut off. That's in two minutes. Then it's not, it's not happening, but don't say anything. Just keep quiet. No, I want to absolutely rip him to pieces in two minutes. I just leave it for now, Tyson. George is working hard to try and get it, pull it all together. He said, just give me a until it's close of play tonight. DJ! No signature! Five o'clock! Now, to me, my conclusions there are pretty conclusive. They're the actions of a man that did not want to fight Anthony Joshua. He was asked by his team, just give us a couple of minutes, give us a couple of hours, give us till the end of the day, we'll get this over the line. He decided not to do that. Now, we end up getting Derek Chisora. That Derek Chisora fight was announced two, two and a bit weeks later. Why not give the Anthony Joshua negotiations that two and a half weeks in order to get it over the line? That's for you to answer. Let's move on to, answer, let's move on to the Alexander Usyk situation. Now, before we get into the actual crux of the conversation, let's analyse where Tyson Fury's head is at with Alexander Usyk. This is what he said about Usyk when he was asked about potentially fighting him. Usyk ain't on the list. He's a no-name. No one's interested and it doesn't make any money. So what would I want to fight him for? It's, it's a small cruiserweight and nobody's really interested anyway. He's not setting anything alight. I want the big fights that people are interested in and that ain't one of them. What if he was to beat Joshua? Still, it wouldn't be a big fight. He's still, he's still a foreigner in a, in a westernised world. The belts are back in the west um, and they're going to stay there. And, you know, for wh whatever it sounds like, the heavyweight champion should be from Britain or America and nowhere else. That's it. Because maybe in Ukraine he might be a big star, but... The, the Britain or America ain't interested in, in some Ukrainian boxers boxing in Ukraine, and that's the way it is. The heavyweight champion of the world needs to be in the West, and that's it. That's how it goes. Again, pretty conclusive. He said it, not me. He's not interested in fighting Alexander Usyk. So based on that, I'm justified in saying that, uh, that Tyson Fury doesn't really want to fight him. So the question is, we're being told that December 23rd, he's going to fight him. So why is he fighting him? Come back into boxing. I said I wanted to make the much mo as most money as possible. That's what I said to my lawyer. Um, I didn't come back this time for belts or titles or anything. I come back to secure my family and their family and their kids and their grandkids, and I've done it. 
So let's just get this straight. In April, when all the negotiations were going on and we're talking about 70-30 splits and rematch clauses, this, that and the other, when there wasn't a big bag of money on the table, we get social media roadblocks and we don't get a fight. However, now, when there's a big bag of dough on the table, we get social media silence and the fight ends up getting made. I'd like to reiterate at this point, because this is absolutely fair and we're trying to be transparent, that Team Usyk are the ones that eventually walked away from the negotiations in April. That's why that fight ended up getting pulled to one side. I have absolutely always said Tyson Fury is not interested in who stands across from him in a boxing ring. I've also always said that he's not interested in becoming undisputed, unlike Alexander Usyk is. I have also said that if there's a big bag of money, Tyson Fury will fight King Kong, Godzilla, you name it, he will be there, absolutely. Why do I think that? Because he is the person that has told us that. I've just played those clips to you. The only reason we are getting Fury versus Usyk this at the end of this year, fingers crossed, is because greed and ego have been satisfied. And I'm absolutely thankful for it. I'm delighted for it. Because without that Saudi Arabian money, we, it wouldn't be happening. It's the best fight in boxing, best fight in heavyweight boxing. It's historic. And at this point, I want to commend you, Spencer Brown, because I know that you've played a massive role in being able to make that happen. You have been the go-between between between all these parties to get that over the line. Well done. And I will always, always, always give you props for that. Now, I'd also like to point out that a couple of weeks ago, I'm on record in predicting that this would happen because I told my audience on my podcast, Fight Disciples, that Fury Usyk would play a role in some way, shape or form in the Riyadh season. And here we are. Now, given Team Fury's feelings towards me, I'm not blind. I'm, I fully appreciate that I'm probably not going to be in attendance for that undisputed heavyweight championship fight. I can live with that. Doing what I do for a living, I own what I say, and not everybody is going to like it. I accept it. I'm not one of these that is going to say things behind your back and suck up to your face like so many others are doing in Riyadh to you this week. I've proven that on countless times. Go on, ask Frank Warren. Owning what you say is important. Getting upset with someone because their opinion is based on the things that you said that you do not want to own is ironic in my world. You can't get mad at a guy for questioning whether you want to fight someone when you're on record saying that you don't want to find that same someone. Be consistent. It leads to less confusion. To finish off, here's my invitation. Over the next 48 hours, Team Fury, Spencer, I'm coming to you in particular because you're the leader of Team Fury, it seems, this week. Many YouTube channels are going to stick a microphone in your face and they're going to ask you to respond to what I've just said. Don't do it. Me and you are, of a, are men of a certain age. We don't need to be going back and forth with tittle tattle on social media and on YouTube channels and all this type of stuff. We've got a big shiny studio here at TalkSport. When you get back from Riyadh, be here. Come here. Simon Jordan will welcome you onto his show. I will welcome you onto my show. I'm here more Saturdays. If that's a bit too much and you don't want to do it in public, get my number off somebody. Let's go for a coffee. You can air all your grievances towards me. I will try and justify them. If I can't, I'll hold my hands up. But everything I have ever said about Tyson Fury has been because of his words and his actions. That is it. Nothing made up. You're listening to Fight Night on Talk Sport. Number one for boxing on the world's biggest sport radio station where we own what we say.
Live Gallagher Premiership Rugby on TalkSport 2. That's a brilliant, brilliant catch. Hear tough tackling rugby union commentary as Newcastle Falcons take on Northampton Saints. It's going to go through and score in the corner. Tomorrow afternoon from 3 on TalkSport 2. The Gypsy King, Tyson Fury. He is Tyson Fury. He is the best in the world at the moment. There's no doubt about that. He's probably, in my opinion, the best heavyweight out there at the minute. So listen, Tyson Fury can call the shots a little bit if he wants to. The King has returned to the top of the ball. Yeah, this is a fight night on TalkSport. I'm Adam Catchell, Spencer Oliver, and Johnny Fisher alongside me. A lot of sport going on this evening. Of course, we've got uh, the British title fight going on right now. Uh, and over my right shoulder, which is in, which is being watched uh, intensely by Mr. Johnny Fisher, is the obviously uh, the, the Rugby World Cup final, uh, which is being kept across by the one and only Mr. Andrew McHenry. He's watching it for TalkSport. Michael, what's going on, mate? Well, we've got two heavyweights slugging it out in Paris at the moment, and New Zealand have finally got their first try of the evening. Bowden Barrett, the fullback, has just gone over in the left-hand corner to make it New Zealand 11, South Africa 12. Richie Mwanga will take the conversion, therefore, wide out on the left-hand touchline. Not an easy kick, but it's if you're going to be wide out as a right-footed kicker, you want to be on the left-hand side, not the right, so you can draw it in, and it looks like that Richie Mwanga has not been able to draw that one in, so South Africa will remain one point in front. New Zealand actually thought they scored their first try just a couple of moments ago. Aaron Smith it was after Richie Moanga's break. Aaron Smith in his final game for New Zealand before international retirement. However, the TMO came involved and decided there'd actually been a knock-on by uh, New Zealand earlier on in the move, so that was wiped out. But uh, only four minutes later, uh, they do get their try. Remember, New Zealand playing this game with only 14 on the pitch since the half-an-hour mark. New Zealand captain Sam Kane shown a yellow card. It went to the off-field review, which upgraded it to a red. So the New Zealand captains become the first man ever sent off in a Rugby World Cup final. 20 minutes to play in this one. No idea which way this one's going. New Zealand 11, South Africa 12. Top stuff, Michael. Much appreciated. We'll keep across that throughout the course uh, of the evening. Uh, over in Riyadh, Saudi Arabia, David Adelaide and Fabio Wardley are going at it. We've got a British heavyweight in the studio with us right now, the Southern Area Champion, a man that's got aspirations of English, British, European, Commonwealth and world titles himself. Uh, keeping across it, tentative start. Yep. What do you make of it? Um, first of all, credit to both men being in there. Great fight and, um, yeah, tentative... Uh Tentative start, but it's opening up now. We're watching it as it is going. But um, round one, a bit tentative. But number two, I think Adelaide landed a few more pot shots. A little bit uh, pressure coming from Wardley. Mm. But that's playing a bit into Adelaide's hands a little bit because he's pot shotting off of that pressure that Wardley's providing. We need more of this, don't we, Spence? F- fights like this. I know that obviously we had a situation a bit back where Big Fraser was pulled out because of a purse bid and all this type of stuff. But we have a really good domestic scene especially in the higher weight divisions I know obviously we're talking about Johnny's weight division at uh, heavyweight here we've got a good one at cruiserweight good one at light heavyweight we want to see all those British lads have a bit of a go with each other don't we and you very rarely get a bad British title absolutely listen the British title brings out something special in fighters right we've got a guy here in the British champion Fabio Wardley who proved himself against Nathan Gorman where a lot of people felt that he may be not quite ready for that sort of fighter and he won the fight and won it conclusively in three rounds he's now 16 and over 15 games you've got David Adelaide, a guy that I've known since the amateurs, boxed for Dale Youth, always knew he was going to be a good good fighter. He's going up, and now this is his coming-of-age fight, going against Fabio Wardley. Who was going to win this fight? I didn't know at the beginning of the belt. I've sort of gone one way, then I've gone the other way. Mm. Now we're into round three. You asked me the question, who's going to win this fight? <laughs> still not and I'm still none the wiser. <laughs> yeah, that's a good title fight. I've got, yeah. Absolutely. I've got Adelaide winning the first round, nicking the first round. Wardley maybe nicking the second round. Landed a couple of good right hands. Mm. But guess what? Mm. This fight could change as quick as a light switch with one shot landing because both guys are very, very heavy-handed. Wardley's really opening up now in this round as well, M- much more noticeably than the uh, first two. I've sparred Wardley countless times and he really can turn it on. When he wants mm. to turn it on and he wants to throw hammer and tong, you know about it. So that's what uh, Adelaide's got to be wary of himself. Do you notice a difference in pedigree with Wardley? Because he obviously he does come from that white-collar yeah. 
background when you're sparring other lads that have maybe come through the amateur pedigree and they've got different bits and bats to the to their game. Do you, do you spot something quite obviously different? I spot with Wardley, it's not so much I'm looking at it and thinking, oh, he's not as experienced as the other guys. I think he's got a doggedness that's mm. unique. Right, yeah. That's uh, that not whether you've had hundred amateur fights or no amateur fights, you can't teach that. John, and Wardley's got that. Johnny, do you know we saw that actually when he boxed when he boxed Nathan Gorman. A lot of people thought Gorman was going to actually win that fight. Gorman tagged him with a right hand in the second round, rocked him down to the sole yeah. of his boots, and he proved what sort of fighter he was yeah. because he bit down on his gum shield and turned it around as quick as you like. He he's put it, it put it on him yeah. and won the fight in the third round. That tells me he's got that dog in him, Definitely. that bit of fight that you need. And and that was like I say, that was his coming of age fight. He's going to be a tough guy to mm. beat because. Looking at it here in the third round, he's starting to turn starting the screw to, already. Yeah. He's landing those big right uppercuts. Adelaide's still, you know, looking very dangerous on the outside as well. Great contest, this. And one thing I've noticed about uh, Wardley over the couple of two, three years I sparred him, physically, the work he's doing with his strength and conditioning coaches as well, you've got to commend them guys because he's really physically, his shape has changed, he's matured. What is he, 28, 29 now, I think, maybe a little bit less. But I can see, uh, from what I've seen over the two, three years, he's definitely matured as a mm. fighter. When you actually look at the step up in level, Spence, to this particular fight, Wardley seems to have had just the biggest step ups to this day. I remember him being in Mol mm. Molina quite early, he had a little bit yep. of a goal there, didn't he? And you mentioned a couple there. This seems a bigger step up for Adelaide in this particular fight than it does for Wardley. Absolutely. But you know what? You go back to, like I say, like where they both started in the game, and Adelaide actually is the one that has the more experience yeah. over, the, over the amateur. He was the better, had the better amateur pedigree and whatnot. So it sort of levels it out a little bit. Wardley's sort of like, yeah, he's had those tests, he's had those fights, like we'd say with Molina. And, and Nathan Gorman, who I've mentioned as well, he seems to have boxed at that higher stage. This is more about we've sort of we know what Wardley's all about now because he's proved himself. This is more about can David Adelaide back up what he's what, said yeah, about what he's him. been saying he's been what doing, he's been yeah. saying he's doing as yeah. well. You know, because he's been talking the talk. Now he has to walk the walk. It does feel that the momentum is with Fabio Ooh, Wardley yeah. just at this moment. As we are, mm -hmm. where are we, boys? We're at three. six, three rounds. Four, 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 we're into the fourth round. Four. We're into the fourth Just round. physically imposing himself a yeah. little bit more. Feels like that. Yeah. yeah. Anyway, we'll keep across that. Um, I'll tell you what we will do. We're going to cross over to Riyadh in a minute uh, because I know that we uh, are allegedly banned from certain things, but there's another fella that's been banned from some stuff too. And he's, that, this has happened to him whilst he's on the ground out in Riyadh. We're going to be speaking to him very, very shortly. Don't be going anywhere because Ben Shalom's on the show next.
Live Sunday Championship Football, Sheffield Wednesday versus Rotherham. Tea and biscuits from 12.45, kick-off at 1. It's not on the telly, Eddie. No, it's on Talk Sport, too. Even song, even better live football, this Sunday on Talk Sport 2. Amen. You are listening to Fight Night on TalkSport. I'm Adam Cattrall, Spencer Oliver and Johnny Fisher with me in our London studio. We're going to keep you across everything that's going on in Riyadh as Tyson Fury will be in the ring with Led to Believe sometime before 11 o'clock this evening, UK time, uh, taking on uh, Francis Ngannou in his professional boxing debut. Right now, British title fight on foreign soil. That's right. It is Fabio Wardley taking on David Adelaide. Johnny Fisher's right across it. And as we said, just before the break, as round four was concluding, Fabio Wardley just getting on top there, Johnny. And he's he's looking to he's looking really good now, actually. Yeah. He's, he's in a good rhythm. He's in a very good rhythm. And uh, we spoke earlier on about how he's chopping them them um, right hands into the body. Now starting to loop a few over, bring them hands down a bit. It's good, good tactics. Got Ben Davidson in his corner, great coach. And uh, yeah, he looks like he's taking a bit of control. He does. Um, now then, shall we get to Riyadh? Let's get into Riyadh, shall we? Because there is a gentleman that is currently ringside. He might actually be able to give us uh, some insider information. He might be able to give us ring blow-by-blow commentary from uh, from ringside. I don't know if we're allowed to do that, actually. We'll probably get shut down, won't we? Everything that's happened this week. We don't want to cause any more trouble, do we? <laughs> uh, ben, uh, ben Shalom, how are you, sir? You well? I'm very well. I'm actually sad. Mm. Wouldn't be able to do this in the UK, but I'm sat ringside just watching this fight. I'm looking for uh, you. I, I can actually see you on my screen, listen, my friend. I can see your cheeky you know, little face you know there, what? ringside. Yes, I can. You know what? Um, David started really well, but Fabio's now now coming into it. He's mm-hmm. boxing really well. Yeah. But David is dangerous. You can see. You can see. Fabio's gonna have to stay switched on here. Look at you uh, oh, going for a pundit role. I like that. That's 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 wonderful yeah. work. Uh, listen, yeah. what is this I hear about you being also on the ban list? Listen, are you joining me on this ban list? What's going on here, Ben? <laughs> it feels. It definitely feels like it. No, no. To be honest, one set. Let's kick. Oh. Wow. Um, concentrate on no, the conversation. Don't you worry about the fight. Yeah, Come yeah, on, yeah. sunshine. Yeah, Let's go. Yeah. No, it's been good. To be fair. Um, it's been a it's been a crazy week to see to see the money that's being spent out here, the names that are here, the the size of it, the production in it, it. It's been incredible to be honest. So it's been good to be here. And Martin did the business, had actually a really good performance. He was uh he was injured all camp, had mm. a terrible back, couldn't spar more than one or two rounds. He put on you know about twenty pounds. It was ridiculous. Um, but he's a very very good fighter, and he knew he only had to be at fifty percent to to sort of demolish Carlos Takam, which is very good. Given I was in Paris in in March when Carlos fought Tony Oka and and looked as though to roll back the year, so yeah, great performance by Martin. Really, really happy for him. Referring to Martin Bacoli there, your uh, the, your heavyweight, of which we've got on the show a little later on. We're going to be speaking to him once uh, everything's just chilled out a little bit, and we'll get his uh, thought process on his great win over uh, Carlos Takam. I just want to pick your brains from a promoter's point of view, Ben. Obviously, you're out there uh, with yeah. Martin looking after him. But this is obviously new for a lot of people. Saudi Arabia have been investing a lot of money into boxing and in particular the heavyweight scene over the last few years. This feels from over here that this one is even bigger and better before uh, compared when we compare it to previous events. How do you see this now changing the landscape of boxing from a British fight fan uh, consumption point of view? And how do you think that this will affect the way that you go forward and do business? Look, it could be huge, but you know it can have good effects and bad effects. I think last time you saw the heavyweight division hold up for about two years because everyone was waiting for the the big paydays and the big nights. I think it's just about consistency. I think if it can be done consistently and it's in line and the fighters are uh, you know are still staying active, then it can be an amazing thing. Um, that was that was the only I think problem with the last couple of fights is it really did make a lot of the division inactive, but. Uh, yeah, it's going to be a massive part of boxing going forward. We've seen it with Qatar, we, we've seen it with Abu Dhabi, we've seen it with Saudi. They're all competing with each other. They all love boxing and they want to bring eyeballs to their territory. So it's a, it is amazing for the fighters. You, um, your shows are actually quite innovative at boxing, obviously. You, I think you cater quite well for that younger demographic wanting to come to the boxing. Have you seen anything out there from a production point of view that maybe you can cherry pick and bring it back to a boxer show in the UK? 
Yeah, but honestly, the budget's out here. I have <laughs> never seen. I've never seen anything like it. They've spent more on people on people being here than we we could spend on a card. It's, it's incredible. Who are you sat it's next to? Who can you see? see? Is Naz is Naz yeah, in the it. house? Can you see him? Everyone's here. Everyone's here. Mike Tyson, Naz, Eminem. Kanye Mate. West, West is apparently Mate. about to arrive. Right, listen, you know, both Ronaldo's been listen, ridiculous. The next boxer show, then, if I'm if I'm not sat in the vicinity of Eminem, Kanye West, and Jay Z, <laughs> there's going to be a problem, pal. That's, go, the, that, go, that's what we've got to do. Yeah. Go, go yeah. better than that, mate. I we think, want Eminem uh, playing at the next yeah, boxer event, mate. Get the Gallagher brothers uh, in; they're doing a bit of Oasis. Reunite Oasis. That's what you should be doing, Bob. Ben, that's yeah. the next thing. Listen, we're lucky to get Love Islanders in the UK, so uh, <laughs> it would uh, be brilliant to see them over here. But yeah, no, incredible experience. Hopefully, hopefully it continues. Listen, um, I haven't spoken to you since. Uh, congratulations on the way that you managed to turn around everything last week. I know that that was a highly stressful situation, keeping pit fighters on fight cards, getting them paired. And obviously, I know you had to change venue last minute. Um, and you ended up getting uh, some good fights on that card, which I'm sure entertained the fans that uh, did come out to see it and watch it on Sky. What's the news yeah. on the fight that fell off? Everybody wants to see Boazzi Aziz. Have you got a working date that you're going towards? We do. Dan's had a, has a really good week, um, and so we're now confident enough to announce that date this week. I, I, can't, I can't say it now Why? because of the fighters. What's the matter we'll with you? The, come on, man. You know how we roll here. I tell you what, though, last week we announced our, our big NBC American deal the day after we had to pull an event, and it was it was uh, yeah. it was a crazy week. But as you said, glad to keep it on. But we'll see as these. Uh, yeah, we'll announce a new date this week. Which okay, G- really give me a clue. Forward. Give me a clue. Before the end of the year, is that fight going to happen? It looks good. It looks good. okay. Great. Looks ben, good. ben, Ben, just quickly before you go, mate. Chris Billum Smith as well. Big news there. He's fighting in his hometown hometown of Bournemouth, December the tenth. Yeah, look, we love going there. I mean, it's been ridiculous for us to gone from Isaac Chamberlain to then selling out the stadium and winning the world title. It was a, it was a special journey. But Masternak is a is a serious fight. Um, yeah. I don't think people realise, you know, he's been waiting for this fight, wanting this fight for a while, and he's going to come and stick it right on Chris Bill and Smith. And twelve months ago, you know, a lot of people said Chris Bill and Smith was European level, never mind world level. Masternak is world level. It's going to be an unbelievable fight on December the tenth. Richard Riappo is going to be there. He's in the mandatory position as well. Lawrence Okoli. So, yeah, huge year for all three of them coming yeah. up. Uh, Listen, uh, just, uh, just from a Bill and Smith point of view yeah. on that, if I were him, I'd be ultra revved up for this because Masternak kind of swerved the Opatia situation to open up this door. Yep. So he's obviously thinking to himself, Bill and Smith's a softer touch. Masternak is a guy that brings it, mate. He is a tough, yeah, rough a customer. That is a great fight, Ben. And t- tell us the reasons, mate, why that's happening on a that's Sunday as well. <laughs> Look, if, first of all, Chris wanted to make sure his fans could get there. I think Bournemouth are playing away at United and, and it very much is the football fans that come to his show. But yeah. as you said, Masternat is coming to win in December. I said to I said to Chris, it might not be the same fight as Lawrence Okoli or Richard Riappo, but if he's not absolutely 100% almost career best performance again, He'll be in trouble in December. I really believe that. He's going to have to be so switched on. And as you said, Masternak has, has sought this one out. He, he decided he want, would prefer to face Chris Billing Smith and Opa Tyre. And uh, yeah, Chris is going to have to be on his A game um, to come through. Solid. Sorry, it's very, it's very, very difficult. No, I <laughs> can imagine. I can imagine. I've, Listen. Got, I've, got, I've got the whole row looking at me wondering what the hell is going on. <laughs> Listen, just tell me you're on British radio. It'll wind everybody up. Anyway, don't do that. <laughs> uh, ben, Definitely not talk sport. No, anyway. don't, don't mention on it. Yeah, Listen. exactly. I've Listen. brought talk sport into the, into the, into the, into the show. <laughs> Listen, thank you so much uh, for joining us for a short period of time. I'm looking forward to the announcement uh, of the rescheduling of Boazzi and Aziz. And as, uh, as Spencer just pointed out there, the Bill and Smith fight against Master Knight should be an absolute cracker. Uh, thanks for joining us, mate. Enjoy. Cheers, guys. Enjoy, Sorry. mate. Cheers, bye. There you go. Ben Shalom, um, CEO of Boxer, uh, who is currently in Riyadh. I can see him on my TV screen. He's in the corner there, uh, watching uh, David Adelaide and Fabio Wardley. Before we just have a quick break to uh, the rugby, Johnny Fish is keeping across this. As it carried on the momentum, it looked like David Adelaide was having some success there in well, those when middle we, rounds. When we, when we first went on to uh, speak to Ben Shalom, there was a great little trade-off uh, between Wardley and uh, Adelaide, quite 50-50. But again, now, that, that big, strong jab from Wardley is getting a bit more uh, control. But he's mm. definitely in this fight, Adelaide. It's, 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 a great, it's a great fight. And now in the second half, we'll see what both are made of. Pretty title fights, mm. eh?
Yeah, yeah, do you know, I love it, mate. And do you know what Adelaide is very good at doing? When both guys are getting in the clinches here, as they're going, yeah. Wardley's switching off and Adelaide's countering quick with those great left, little left hook. Yeah. Wardley has to be careful he don't get caught on the inside. No. Absolutely. Yeah, listen to Fight Night on Talk Sport. We'll be back with some boxing in a minute, but Andrew McKenna is keeping across this Rugby World Cup final for Talk Sport. Maka, what's going on, buddy? Seven to play, still New Zealand 11, South Africa 12. That Bowden Barrett try for New Zealand on 58 minutes, by the way, the first ever try that South Africa have conceded in a World Cup final, and they're looking for their fourth trophy win this evening. Now, there's a penalty advantage to New Zealand, but they're just checking at the moment, and there is going to be a yellow card for South Africa, and it looks like it's going to be Cheslin Colby for a deliberate knock-on. So he will be leaving the field. So unless this game goes well into overtime, we're not going to see Cheslin Colby again. So it means we're going to finish this game 14 aside because with Sam Kane sent off for New Zealand in the first half, they've been playing since the 30th minute with only 14 men. But New Zealand have started to get more and more into this game, which, as I say, considering they're playing a man short, there are teams that can't do this to South Africa with 15 on the pitch. To do it with 14 has been seriously impressive all to play for in the Rugby World Cup final, seven to play for, and there's only one point separating the sides, New Zealand 11, South Africa 12. Uh, thanks, Mike. Listen, it's all kicked off in Riyadh because whilst you were having a little bit of a chat there, David Adelaide was flat on his back, and I tell you what, Johnny Fish is doing a bit of shadow boxing in the studio right now. It's been waved off. It's been waved off in the moment there. Uh, Fabio Wardley uh, establishes himself as the British and Commonwealth uh, champion. Uh, I'll, I'll be honest. Listen, there were some questions that were asked in that fight of him. He came through them with fl flying colours. And I tell you what, that's how you rubber stamp that uh, that altercation that those two gentlemen had with Absolutely. a wonderful finish. I think it was in the seventh or eighth round there, just finishing up. Eighth round. Yeah, listen, he showed his experience, didn't he? That's what he'd done. You know, he was being patient. He was taking the opportunities when they were. David Adelaide looked dangerous right from the opening bell. But Wardley, when he seized, when he got his opportunity, he seized it. He jumped on him. Good knockdown. Referee was maybe a little bit premature. Johnny could have let it go on a little bit more. But is it? He was caught, you know, man. is it a case of ten caught. seconds too early Perhaps. rather Agreed. than ten seconds too late? It's that, it's that situation. And that's better to be a little bit early. Absolutely. And I, I thought, I thought maybe perhaps, yeah, yeah. That, that I agree with you there, Spence. Yeah. He, he was cooked a little bit. He weren't catching him completely clean, but he was, he was not frying back really anything. He had a little go, but no, he was. He was, he was on unsteady legs, that's yeah. for sure. And it's like you say, you'd like you like the referees to do a job like he done there where you go live to fight another day son yeah. because uh, you absolutely know, yeah it was one of those situations listen we're going to react to that and we're obviously going to build you up towards Tyson Fury versus Francis and Garnu plus other talking points and if you want to get involved with the show you're more than welcome to do so 03717 we're streaming live on YouTube as well this is Talk Sport
Knockout Radio for your Saturday night fight night on Talk Sport, the home of boxing. Cafe Del Mar. Getting some techno going on. Where are we off to here at Ibiza? Mega. Uh, time now for an odds update with William Hill. In the zone on Talk Sport with William Hill. Get epic value all season with William Hill. 18 plus, be gambleaware.org. Uh, joining us now to bring us right up to date is William Hill's Lee Phelps. Lee, what have you got for us, mate? I'm really looking forward to it. I've been you know, listening to the build up all week, and you know, I think it's, the event's incredible, isn't it? The thing is, Tyson Fury, obviously, as we know, is a huge favourite. One to fourteen to win here, and Garnu is seven to one. The interesting thing, from our point of view, is a bit like the Misfits card. We're seeing more revenue on this than most proper boxing matches. But then, look, Tyson Fury is box office. The special bets are also proving really popular with William Hill customers tonight too. One that I'm calling fast and furious is the heavyweight king to win inside 60 seconds. He's 16 to 1 to do that. And Garnu to win in a minute or less is 66s, by the way. We saw Dylan Dennis get disqualified against Logan Paul. Now, it's a lot less likely that Ngannou tries an MMA move, but he's 40 to 1 to get DQ'd. You can get Ngannou to be knocked down in round 1 or 2. That's knocked down, not out. In round one or two, at three to one, enhanced from six to four. Also three to one for Fury to win the fight in rounds three or four. Personally, I like the theory that Fury boxes in the early rounds, shows off a bit, takes away any possibility of the puncher's chance landing. But as his opponent starts to fatigue, I think the Gypsy King will just be much better, obviously. The timing will start to be more evident. And I think he'll stop Ngannou in the second half of the fight. It might not be a complete knockout, maybe a TKO. I'd go round seven or eight as my pick. Oh, there you go. A little bit of round seven. You, you, what did you say earlier on? You said seven, didn't I you? I went round seven, mate. I mm. think round seven. Mm. I think this is, how, this is how I see the fight going. I think Fury comes out orthodox. He plays around, he peppers around with a jab. He keeps him at range. He's looking at Francis Ngannou, seeing what he's got. Round two, he comes out southpaw. He's doing, again, he's showboating, starting to play up to the crowd a little bit. And he's still peppering away, breaking Ngannou down. Round three, Ngannou starts tiring down. Round four, he's getting even more tired. Get into five, six. His heart keeps him in there. His toughness keeps him in there. Round seven, it's all over. I'll get Johnny's thoughts in a minute. All right, mega stuff. Uh, that was a look at the latest odds in partnership with William Hill. Top price guarantee this weekend. Comparison and selected competitors. Uh, excludes enhanced prices. Further restrictions, terms and conditions apply. You've got to be over 18. BeGambleAware.org. In the zone on Talk Sport with William Hill. Get epic value all season with William Hill. 18 plus, BeGambleAware.org.
1089 and 1053 medium wave on your mobile and on your smart speaker talk sport talk sport with the 10 o'clock headlines i'm tom clayton good evening as we prepare for the clocks to go back it's time running out for paul heckingbottom a 5-0 defeat at arsenal leaves sheffield united with no wins and square bottom after 10 games talk sports asked him about his future i've been uh, as honest as i possibly can be to help people out and, and be the face of the club and represent it that way but this is probably an issue that i know the least about relief for andoni iriola as bournemouth came from behind to beat burnley 2-1 their first win of the season uh, it feels great <laughs> We needed this one. Uh, you feel a little bit relieved because it was a huge game for us. Eddie Howe's concerned about Newcastle's schedule after a two-all draw with Wolves. They face Manchester United, Arsenal and Dortmund in their next three in all competitions. Meanwhile, Chelsea lost at home today as Brentford beat them 2-0. Gareth Ainsworth's been sacked by QPR after losing 2-1 to Leicester. They've lost six straights and haven't been haven't won since beating Middlesbrough on September the 2nd. In League 2, a man's been given a lifetime football stadium ban after he was arrested for racially abusing a player. A Gilliam supporters thought to have abused Omar Bogle in in their 2-0 home defeat to Newport. Both clubs say the actions are abhorrent and thanks fellow supporters for reporting it. And some breaking news in the last couple of minutes. South Africa have been crowned Rugby World Champions for a fourth time. They beat New Zealand 12-11 in Paris this evening. There'll be a full report on TalkSport.com shortly. Talk sport news. Two men have been arrested after police clashed with protesters at a pro-Palestinian march in London today and Hastings Priory Meadow shopping centre had to be evacuated because of flooding as more heavy rain hits the UK. Talk sport weather with Quick Fit. Don't let car troubles get in the way of your journeys this autumn. Visit your local centre or quickfit.com for tyres, servicing and batteries so you can drive away happy every time. Heavy and thundery showers moved northwards overnight. Some flood risks have been issued across the country. This is it. The time has come. Get in the ring and go the distance with Fight Night. And Rock Carroll puts him down. With Adam Catterall. You're better than that. On Talk Sport, the home of boxing. This is a fight night on TalkSport. I'm Adam Catterall. Spencer Oliver and Johnny Fisher are in the studio with me ahead of uh, Tyson Fury versus Francis Ngannou. We'll keep you across that. We're just having a general uh, fight night show. We've got plenty of guests coming your way. We're going to be speaking uh, to Bell- Bellator title hopeful Leah McCourt. She's going to give us a little bit of an MMA insight, a little bit of a differentiation uh, between boxing striking and MMA striking and how that might play out tonight in Tyson Fury versus Francis Ngard. If you want to get involved with the show, you're more than welcome to do so. 03717 You listen to Fight Night on Talk Sport. Uh, the Rugby World Cup final has just been completed. Mac has been right across this. I've no doubt that it was very, very edgy in those closing moments. Only one point separated him in the end, my man. How did it go? Absolutely. New Zealand, 11. South Africa, 12. So South Africa are the first side in World Cup history to take the title four times. They've done it on the back of four Andre Pollard penalties. They weren't able to score a try this evening, but they've got the job done. New Zealand did score the game's only try. Bowden Barrett crossing the line in the second half in the 58th minute. They had two Richie Mwanga penalties as well. Mwanga and Jordi Barrett also had shots at goal late on in the game that they weren't able to uh, land, which has uh, meant that they come up short, though. The game will be long remembered, though, for the cards shown in this game. Shannon Frizzell shown a yellow card in only the third minute. A tackle on Bongi and Banambi, the South African hooker, that actually saw the hooker have to be replaced, so early in the game with a knee problem Sam Kane shown a yellow card half an hour into the match for a high tackle on Jesse Creel that was upgraded off the field by the officials so that turned into a red card New Zealand therefore finishing the last 50 minutes of this match with only 14 and Sia Kalise the South African captain being shown a yellow card five minutes into the second half also for a high tackle South Africa though pretty much managed to get through that period without conceding any points Aaron Smith did cross the line for a New Zealand try but it was ruled out by the TMO for a knock-on. Hugely, hugely dramatic game. Tense 
maybe not the highest of qualities at times, but that was probably due to the tension and everything else that went with it. It's not been great conditions in Paris this evening either. High winds, lots of rain, but so, so much tension. South Africa have done it. Back-to-back -back champions, 2019-2023, and the first team to win the Webb Ellis Cup four times. South Africa are your World Cup champions for 2023. They've beat New Zealand 12-11 in the final. Johnny, I know you're a big uh, rugby fan, right? I can take that because they beat us. Yeah. Yeah? Are we, yeah. Is that okay? It's quite interesting. I was just <laughs> thinking to myself there, South Africa lost to Ireland, New Zealand lost to France and they're the both teams in the final and maybe Ireland can take a little victory saying we beat the World Champions this World Cup. I don't know. But, yeah, we'll see. <laughs> Uh, congratulations, South Africa yeah, world champions, as uh, as we've just heard there for uh, for the fourth time. Right, let's look ahead to uh, to tonight's main event because the undercard, which is the thing, if I'm if I'm really really honest, that was the thing that I was most uh, interested in this evening. Obviously, we've just seen a great British title fight uh, between David Adelaide and Fabio Wardley. Fabio Wardley coming through with the uh, with a the stoppage there. Uh, we saw a little earlier on Moses Atoma on this card tiny little step up not a major step up we've got to remind ourselves that he's only 18 19 years of age the boy coming through he looked very very good very explosive got himself uh, an early stoppage we saw Joseph Parker in action as well uh, getting himself uh, a victory too and we saw Arslan Beck McMoodov who looks a ferocious character uh, yeah. getting the job done as well a night of heavyweight action absolutely McMoodov um <laughs> He's a beast. He is a beast. Six foot five Russian. What's he? 17 and 0 now with 16 KOs. Um, the only guy to go the distance with him actually was Carlos Takamu. Martin Bacoli knocks out tonight. Um, but yeah, strong guy. Very strong guy. And he done the job again tonight. Bacoli come in at 299 pounds, nearly 300 pounds. Way, way, way overweight down to a back injury that he had. Couldn't train properly. Still took the attack and fight and he got the job done. What was that? Inside four rounds? Was it four rounds? I'm not sure. Yeah, so, so it was... Anyway, he won the fight inside the distance, which was a good performance. Fourth considering, round. fourth yeah. round, considering, um, the, you know, the circumstances going into that one. And then Joseph Parker, what a good shot that was that left um, right uppercut, uppercut through yeah. the middle the exact same shot funny enough <laughs> that Tyson Fury knocked Dillian White out with that he's just teeing it up with the left hand holding it like boxing a little bit Tyson-esque really was like holding that left hand out just drove the right uppercut through the middle landed flush went over got up and then repeated that same shot again it was a good performance yeah. from Joseph Parker stays in the top 10 of all the governing bodies and puts himself still possibly in line for another title shot imagine that if he boxed Tyson Fury we, we know Tyson Fury likes to give his mates defences he done it with Derek Chisora who knows don't don't start who knows? me don't start me off again <laughs> <laughs> alright move on quickly yes let's move on quickly listen this evening we find ourselves in a situation that I don't think any of us really anticipated to find ourselves in uh, the WBC heavyweight world champion Tyson Fury is uh, going to step into the ring with a guy making his professional boxing debut. I want to concentrate on that guy first and foremost, all right? Francis Ngannou, that is. Because this fella's story is absolutely riveting. For those that don't know too much, if you don't follow MMA and you don't know this fella's story, I was in the very, very pri privileged position around about six or seven years ago to be one of the first people to interview him as he was about to make his first effort at becoming a uh, heavyweight champion in the UFC. He fell short that night, uh, but it was uh, an honour to... Sit with him, chat with him. You kind of get the feel for the fella's demeanour that he's quite a relaxed, calm, well-spoken guy. And he's obviously been through some struggles in his life. And in, in that conversation, he was telling me about working in sand mines and attempting on several occasions to get out of Cameroon to try and get into Europe because he had this dream of boxing, of which he's uh, trying to accomplish this evening. And on several occasions, he fell short. Authorities and various other things used to pull him back and throw him back in the sand man and all this type of stuff. And so he managed to get himself on a boat into the ocean, away you go, finds himself in Europe, sleeps rough in France, stumbles across uh, uh, a couple of gyms. He gets persuaded to have a do at MMA because, listen, man, you're very good at this. You've got big, powerful legs. Maybe you can boot some people and all this type of thing. Uh, but his dream has always been boxing, always been boxing. And as a story, and I'm sure it's well documented now and everybody's seen what he went on to go and do, it's one of the greatest sports stories that, that actually exists in, in the modern era, that a guy can come from abject poverty, drag himself across Europe, drag himself to Las Vegas and conquer 
the biggest martial arts franchise in the world by becoming the heavyweight champion. It's God. Rocky Balboa stuff. Yes. Guys, we must remember as well, you know, when he'd done this, 2012, he attempted and achieved this. It was a 14-month journey going through numerous countries, going in jail for two months, walks into a boxing gym, says, I want to be a boxer, done no discipline before ever, and they said, you know what, son? Do the MMA. You can earn money quicker that way. He says, all right, then I'll do MMA. Does MMA comes a UFC heavyweight champion? I mean, could you imagine this story? I mean, the guy has come. His family live in mud huts. No telephone, no telephones. None of them owned any telephones. I mean, the poverty. This is a rags to riches story, mm. which is, it, like you say, if you see this, if this was documented in a film, you would think it was too far fetched. Yep. I mean, this guy's journey, and he's a, he's, a, he's a lovely human being as well. And you just love those inspirational yeah. stories, don't you? I mean, Johnny, what what a story that is! Well, what if the story gets a little bit better and he wins tonight in the oh, first round? Could you imagine, mate? It's it's astronomical if he wins tonight. And for, listen, heavyweight boxing and its landscape has been in a, a bit of a mess. Okay, and it's frustrating for fans. We all want to see X, Y, and Z, don't we? And those things haven't materialised. If Francis Ngannou is going to be the beneficiary of this mess. Like tonight, career high payday, great stuff. And whether any of us believe that he's going to be able to pull this off, the fact is he's about to walk to the ring to have a boxing match against the best, the premier heavyweight on the planet. Win, lose or draw, he's cracked the game. He's already won. He's absolutely yeah. cracked it. From where he was to where he is tonight, mind-blowing. This right. guy had never even put on a pair of gloves when he was 25 years of age. Do you know what I mean? Like, if you look at the journey that he's been on in the last decade, yeah. it's absolutely insane. Let me let me just also add this to it as well. When he was the heavyweight champion of the UFC, there was a period of time there where he's renegotiating contracts. Now, the UFC contracts are very, very difficult. They're difficult to get out of if you've signed them for a period of time because you sign up for a certain amount of fights, all right? Now, he's come to the end of his contractual agreement. He's got one fight left on that contractual agreement, and he has it. It's a world title fight against Cyril Gann. It was hotly tipped. Very 50-50 fight. He's gambled on himself to win it, to keep the leverage of being the heavyweight champion, and now he's a free agent. So he's going into conversations with the UFC and saying, right, what's the situation? They've obviously made X, Y, and Z offer to him. At that time, never boxed, no offers on the table. Gambles on himself to walk away from the heavyweight championship of the world. Millions of dollars on the table to fight the likes of John Jones and various other people in order to fulfill this dream. It's not, it's not a reality. He's now listen, obviously, this might be uncomfortable comprehensible for a lot of people but we're talking about a guy that was working in sand mines who had a mm. dream of being a boxer who, who went on this crazy journey and did all these mad things so his brain obviously works very differently to the normal human being <laughs> Catman Catman you must mention that when he was working in those sand mines he was nine years of age Mate, he no. started at nine years of age Johnny like yeah. if that is not if that is not putting something into you that DNA into you where you go do you know what you will take yourself Johnny, you, you, you'll be out of ouch with me here. You know, as a boxer, yeah. you've got to be prepared to go where no normal human being would go places. in a boxing ring. Yeah. A dark, dark place. He's sort of been there with the yeah. life that he's had and the yeah. life that he's lived. And that puts him in a really strong position where Definitely. he's going into this fight thinking, do you know what? This is like, whereas a normal person mm. would go nerves, the occasion, I've never boxed, all of a sudden the reality yeah. kicks in, I'm boxing the world heavyweight champion, the yeah. number one on the planet. He's not thinking that way. He's thinking He's thinking differently. Well, that probably uh, signifies why he's so laid back in this in this build-up. He's, he's been to them dark places his whole life. He's had a childhood mm. where he's grown up working in them mines. This is the dream. This is the dream that he could he could have only have only dreamt of when he was young, and now he's fulfilling that. So what's the pressure? There is no pressure mm. on him. No one's expected him to win, mm. and in a way that plays into his hands. The pressure's completely off Francis and Ganu. Everyone's expecting him to be bono out in two, three rounds. So if he does anything better than that, it's a Cinderella story. Mm. Speaking of MMA stars, look who's on the TV there. Look who's turned <laughs> up for a piece of the pie. The man that kind of started these crossover fights off a little bit. Uh, Mr. Yeah. Conor McGregor, mm -hmm. uh, we remember a couple of years ago, obviously, he stepped into the ring uh, with one of the greatest uh, to ever do it in uh, in Floyd May, whether he fell short that night. But let's just say he changed his life forever at, and became a multi, multi, multi-millionaire. Absolutely. And I think that remains as the highest pay-per-view viewing figures ever, I think, Floyd Mayweather in that crossover fight with um, with with him. So I believe... 
this could even top that. Do you think? Mm. Well, listen, I think that Tyson Fury is huge in his own discipline. Francis Ngannou is huge in his discipline. And I'm just saying that their numbers could be huge here because you've got that crossover. Heavyweights as well. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Has you it? Know, has it? McGregor, I, I know, has a huge following, and as, as did Floyd Mayweather. But what I'm saying is, I think the crossover in this fight tonight is going to have few huge figures. I think there's a real interest from the MMA media coming up. I mean, I've seen plenty of them over in in Riyadh, obviously covering this fight because they're interested in um, in Francis and what have you. Do you think it's caught fire with with the boxing public? Are they are they, are they bought in to what we're about to witness this evening? It's hard. It's hard to judge because mm. when I go out, if I go out in a in a in a restaurant where I live and things, people talk to me not so much about traditional boxing anymore. They talk to me about when you fight in Tommy Fury, when you fight in KSI. Right, okay. So we've got that sort of crossover there. So this appeals to the mass market of people that are involved in social media. They consume media all over. People talk about Tyson Fury, Francis and Ganu more than they talk about. Tyson Fury, Alexander Usyk. So in a way, I think Fury's got a point about that fight. This is a bigger sell because of the the grandeur, because it appeals to the mass market. It Absolutely. might not appeal so much to the boxing public, but to the grand market, and that's what market forces do. You have to go by that. This is a bigger fight commercially. Johnny, I'm going to give you a situation that happened to me, yeah. right? When this fight was announced, and they were building up in the fight, and so I'm, I'm with a guy who's a very, very casual boxing fan, loves the UFC as well, and he knows in and he says to me, Spence... I can't believe that fight's been made. I said, yeah, well, it's, I know it's it's crazy, isn't it? So I'm thinking, yes, yeah, he's, he's on the yeah. same page he's as gone, you. And Garner's gonna murder him. Yeah, no, no, <laughs> and this like, is my point. I'm, that is the point, right? So because we're in that world, John, yeah. where we come from that boxing world, and so we we we're from that world. But the general, you're right. The, the they don't get fan, it. They, they don't, don't get, get it. it. I was out a couple of weeks ago, and someone genuinely said to me, "Is." You wouldn't be able to take KSI, would you? <laughs> and it's like what? these people believe that. They, yeah, this is what they because they don't consume. They have no boxing knowledge. So a lot of these people, the TikTok crowd, and they they genuinely think these guys are professional yeah. boxing athletes. But I don't know. But yeah, but that's what we got to think about when you're thinking about the numbers. I mean, for instance, that that KSI fight that we done. That yeah. KSI fight that we done right. This the, the figures we had two point two million people watching us. Yeah. Commentate on the on fight. fight. They couldn't see the fight. They're watching us commentate on the fight. 2.2 million people. How many people are in this country? What is it, 68 million? Yeah, 70 million. Well, yeah, there you go. But it's, I mean, it's great. The, the challenge for the boxing purists like us, who we are, mm -hmm. we're boxing people, is to transition them people from that TikTok world of, of, of boxing, of, of influence of boxing. We have to gradually blend it into the traditional side of it. We have to change a little bit with it. Yeah. The good, take the good things from what them guys do, yeah. but we have to convert them to realise that this is real boxing. This Abs is what we absolutely. do. Absolutely, but you know what it is? These this day and age, it's not the boxing that is enough. You've got to sell yourself outside yes. of the ring as well. That's the that's world what we've we live got to in. learn from them guys. Maybe not as brash as what they do, but we have to develop and show our personalities. Not be fake, but throw, give people throw what the they odd want. Bosh out there. Yeah, and all that, that's you know it. I mean? Have a Chinese and that's enjoy. it. Why you go? Yeah. We should have done a Chinese tonight. Should have. Oh, yeah, Saturday night as well. May we we've missed, missed it. We've missed yeah. it there, haven't we? we should There's get the one chat. in Chinatown that's open to about four in the morning, Old Town 97, so we can go there after. I mean, that's what we should have done. Got there the, got go. the yeah. beers there in and all that type of stuff. Get Listen, we are, we are streaming now, so if, you, if you're wanting to consume uh, the fight and have a little bit of a crack wheels as well, you're more than welcome to do so. Just get on uh, the Boxing YouTube channel. Uh, we are there in the TalkSport studio right here at London Bridge in London. Uh, you're listening to TalkSport. It's all in partnership with William Hill. It's who you play with. Up next, we're going to be joined by heavyweight Martin Bacoli who uh, beat Carlos Takam a little earlier on on the Fury and Garnu undercard in Saudi Arabia. And blood gets spilt. Bosh. Yeah, that was good.
NFL Live, the Cincinnati Bengals at the San Francisco 49ers. Somersault into the end zone. Tomorrow night from 8 on TalkSport 2. So now I keep on floating. And I don't think I'm ever coming down. I'm waiting up for so long. So long. It's fight night. On TalkSport, I'm Adam Catterall. Spencer Oliver is alongside me. And, of course, we're keeping across everything that is going on uh, in Riyadh. Um, and a little earlier on in Riyadh, um, getting a victory in emphatic fashion, was Martin Bacoli taking on Carlos Takam, getting the job done nice and quickly. And he very kindly is joining us uh, from his dressing room. Martin, how the devil are you, sir? Are you well? I'm OK. Now, listen... Before we talk about the performance, I've just had a quick chat with your guys that are looking after you out in Riyadh, and I spotted this during the fight. I spotted that you were fly swatting because your fight took place outside in the in the car park, and I'm led to believe that you swallowed an insect in some way, shape, or form during your fight. Is it true? <laughs> yes, I'm, co- <laughs> I'm coughing right now. So it's an amazing and first you know, thing to happen to me when I'm fighting, there was something on a, uh, in a, ring, on a ring disturbing me and Taka. <laughs> and I was surprised I swallowed it. And I was fighting with it. And it's still in my mouth until now. Wow. Martin, I, I heard it was a wasp. Is that right? Yeah, very wasp, but I'm okay. I'm keep drinking water. Wow, that is the first time Mate. I've ever heard That's anything it. like that. Mate, two, two, two opponents in one night, Carlos Takam and a wasp. That's what the, you know what I mean. You got the victory on both of them tonight, mate. Yeah, <laughs> seems like the wasp gives you a tougher fight. To be honest, <laughs> of course. <laughs> um, listen, let's talk about the camp, Martin, because obviously we saw you coming in relatively heavy to this one. Two hundred ninety-nine pounds was the official weight when you hit the scale, my friend. Um, yeah, I know that you've had some problems in camp. What has been the situation leading into this fight? Yeah, I was having a back problem, so. Affect me a lot, and uh, all this camp I just run, uh, run in the gym uh, about four times, and affect my run, affect everything. I was stopping every time I have sparring, so you no, know, like uh, I already accept the fight. You no, know, I said I'm going to stop this guy, I push myself, and uh, I'm a fighter, I'm a warrior. Well, so that's why you know I tell my coach to you not know, cancel the fight and leave it like that. and win the fight. Well, Carlos Takam is known to be a tough guy and we mm. know that he's pushed a lot of the top heavyweights, you know, all the way. You know, he brings it, he's tough. I mean, was there any point, Martin, that you felt that maybe you was going to pull out of this fight because of the injury? Yeah, I don't know. My coach asked me plenty of time. He asked me if you're okay because he wanted to pull out. I said, any coach can protect his boxer. But I keep saying no. Or I will be okay. I push myself and I was having massage every day, every time before I start training and after training. And, uh, no, thank God today I get a big win. You did. You got an absolutely massive win. The first two rounds, you had a look. Uh, you took yeah. the centre of uh, that ring and, and was quite stationary, just having a look and using him, uh, keeping him behind that jab. But then in the third round, obviously, I think Billy had a little word with you and the hand started to go and you were getting to him relatively easy. Martin, until uh, yeah. obviously you ended up stopping him with the referee jumping in uh, midway through the fourth. Yeah, I told, I told my coach that, you know, the first and second round, I just tried to learn him and to see what he's going to bring. If he bring a fight, I'll give him fight. But if not, I would the one, I would the one who give him fight because I know he will not survive in a close fight. Mm. So I learned him first round. I saw he's scared. He doesn't want to come in. And second round and the third, uh, the third round and my coach asked me to go now. He says it's time to do business and now, <laughs> no, I give you an attack him now. <laughs> now listen, we we I know that in the aftermath <laughs> when you were doing the uh, the TV interview, you said, "Listen, I'll fight anybody. Yeah. I'm ready to rock and roll." You are one of the heavyweights that are performing consistently that are going under the radar and maybe not getting the love and attention that you absolutely deserve now. Let's get some names on this, man. Come on. Who do we want to have a dance with next? Because we need that big fight for Martin Bacoli. Of course, I need a big fight as well. So I'm a number two WBA. They want to world is number one. We ask him that fight. He's quiet. He never come back to us. 
in UK. We have uh, George Joyce, we have uh, Daniel Dubois, we have Chizoha, we have J Dylan White, we have Joshua. No, I've been calling them out. Nobody wants to, you know, to fight me. But now I'm chasing out them. But I think I'll get maybe they want to award the fight. If not, it will step away and give up the ranking and uh, fight maybe for WBA ranking. But that is my, my team job. I just focus on the working because I have to go back to the gym now and start running to lose a little bit weight and be, all, be ready for everyone. I mean, Martin, you've you've been the chairman of the Who Wants Him, Who Needs Him club now for the last few years. People, you know, clearly have not wanted to fight you unless they have to. Like you say there, number one and number two with the WBA, yourself and Deontay Wilder. Now, give you a scenario. Their boxing, say if Tyson Fury gets his undisputed fight on, on December the 23rd and comes through victorious or who, whoever comes through victorious, then I believe that those them, them titles then could come fragmented. They could fall apart while those guys go into the return fight and titles can become available. Hmm. So you could effectively be yeah. boxing for the WBA vacant title yeah. against Deontay Wilder. That's how it could play out, couldn't it? Oh, I know. I'm looking I'm looking forward to that. That's a good. Like you said, everything is perfect. Like my team also, they are planning to you know, to get me all title next because, you know, there's not my level anymore because everyone, you know, down off my level, they don't want to fight me. So I need now people you know high level now, from number one to five. So I need a big fight now. I'm ready. As part of Tyson Fury, as everyone as part go and ask him, he'll tell you. you no, know, as part everyone, they knows that the reason why they are avoiding me because they know I give them hard time in the gym, and now they are thinking about in the ring with the. Ten Who have um, listen? There's been quite a few uh, names that are in uh, Riyadh this week, my friend. Have you have you spent any time with uh, Mike Tyson and these other great heavyweights that are on deck? Have you been picking their brains and getting a bit of attention? I mean, um, paint the picture for us, Mike. Yeah, What's come on. it like out there in Saudi? I mean, it's it's yeah. some event. That's my hero. I meet him here, and I was so glad to to see him on my press conference. And I met him in Argentina before the fight, and I met him. I met Mike Tyson. I met Cristiano Ronaldo. And I meet uh, Manny Pacquiao, Oscar De La Hoya. So all top guys, amazing show in Arabia, Saudi Arabia. So I meet everyone, so happy. Martin, listen, my man. I'm going to let you uh, go and rest and celebrate with your, with your uh, team there. Uh, thank you very much for giving us a little bit of time and uh, fantastic performance. I hope next time you don't have to swallow a wasp the next time you're, uh, oh, you're, you're in the ring, my friend. <laughs> Fingers crossed that happens. Dad. Uh, <laughs> Thank you. And hopefully uh, we get an absolute monster fight and we can get it on TalkSport in the not-too-distant future. Go well, my friend. Take care. Congratulations, Martin. <laughs> Thank you so much. Thank you. <laughs> there you go. Uh, Martin McCauley joining us live from Riyadh. He was doing the business a little earlier on against Carlos Takam. Very impressive performance, of course, and as he uh, alluded to there. Fighting outside, you've got to take into the, the, the extra heat, the weather, and now the insects that are flying around the, uh, the ring. Have you ever swallowed a wasp while you're having a scrap? I've never heard of anyone swallowing a wasp. And it, and, and and I was sent a message saying it was actually a wasp. Oh, my days. I mean, it's not a little fly we're talking about here, mate. A wasp is a, that's quite a monster, isn't it? <laughs> Let's be honest. Um, so, yeah, that is the first time I've ever heard that. But you know what? I've got to say about Martin McCauley, super talented. People that may not have heard the name before, trust me, he is the guy that everyone's trying to keep away, trying to keep away from because he is a super talented guy. I've seen him many times in the gym sparring. I saw some unbelievable sparring sessions when he was come down to our gym sparring Derek Jasor and uh, guy is super talented. Mm. He's, he's one to watch. He's been one of them that has been under the radar. Now that he's teamed up with Boxer, he's got on the Sky Sports platform. I know that this is TNT this evening, but it's a good platform for him to be on. Fingers crossed. Now that things are starting to move for him, they can grease a few wheels. Do you know what it is, Adam? He's got the ranking now. That is the yeah. most important thing. So he's getting himself into a position where they can't ignore him anymore. They have to fight him because he's got such a great ranking. And, mm. and you know, I think that's the only way the big names are going to go in with Martin McCauley because of where he's at, positioned in the world rankings. Uh, stick with us. Plenty more to come. You're listening to Fight Night Live on TalkSport.
the warm-up. Inject high-octane explosive entertainment into the post-apocalyptic wasteland that is your average sporting Sunday. The warm-up with Mad Max Rushton and Barry Glendening. Actually, I'm not mad, just a bit tired. He's the rebel weekend warrior chained to the wheel of a spiky futuristic juggernaut of sporting retribution. Actually, it's just a normal city car, 1.6 automatic. Wheel spinning through the blasted badlands of your weekend. Uh, guys. The warm-up with Max Rushton and Barry Glenn Denny. He clearly hasn't heard the show, has he? The future of Sunday morning sports broadcasting. Tomorrow morning from 11 on Talk Sport. Almost forgot that it's nearly Halloween. That's the theme. We'll throw a little bit of uh, the Fright Night stuff as well into our Fight Night uh, broadcast this evening on TalkSport. If you're consuming us on YouTube, we are streaming live this evening. It's me, Adam Catterall, Spencer Oliver, and Johnny Fisher in the studio with us. You're more than welcome to come and join us uh, by the comment section on YouTube, or if you want to get involved with the show yourself, 03717 223344. Uh, we've had an action-packed undercard, which culminated in a British title fight, and it's there that we were going to stay for a moment because Fabio Woodley came through in devastating fashion uh, against David Adelaide. One man that was in attendance in Riyadh, in Saudi Arabia is uh, a British heavyweight in the shape of Fraser Clark, who very kindly uh, has given up a little bit of time as he's maybe mingling between uh, event venues. I know it's very different, this. We'll, we'll try and explain to everybody what is going on. Maybe uh, Fraser can help us out of touch uh, because uh, we are waiting, obviously, the main event of Tyson Fury and Francis Ngannou. Fraser, welcome to the show, mate. How are you? Yeah, good to see you. I'm all good. I'm loving so, life. It's brilliant. Right. Well, so, well, just give us a little bit of a picture of what's going on right now because the undercard bit's finished. We understand that that was all outside and now I believe that you've all got to go inside for, for a different experience. Yeah, I mean, the way I can explain it is like having the O2, doing the undercard in the O2 and then moving to, um, then moving to Wembley for the main event. Wow. But the, but they're all next door to each other, yeah? You're not having yeah, but, to travel. But, 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 no, no, they're right next to each other. You, you, you're just walking. I'm just talking in terms of stadiums. Yeah, you're, you're walking about 100 metres and then you're into a, a, a huge, huge stadium that uh, currently has no ring in it. Uh, but I'm hearing one's going to appear shortly. So, Praise, can yeah, I ask you a question, yeah. mate? How organised is that? Because if that was over here in this country and you was moving, let's say, from the O2 to Wembley Stadium, let's say these two venues are next to each other, that would be absolute chaos. People moving from one venue to another. I mean, what's the organisation out like uh, like out over there? It's gone like clockwork, you know, as much for what I've seen. There's so many, uh, so many stuff around here. And uh, ev everyone seems to be doing as they're told. You know, he he's literally just gone like a clock, but everyone just literally, the Wardley fight finished. Everyone got up, walked through um, a sort of bar area, straight into the other stadium. You, you have your tickets for this, this fight, the Fury fight, straight to it. Everyone straight in, sat down. Unbelievable. So is it separate tickets, you're saying? So you had tickets for the undercard and tickets for the main event? No, no, the, under the undercard was like, Ticket, ticket, Lewis. So you, there's a lot of seats. You just find yourself a seat. Well, Mate, you, I am currently looking at this light show. Are you in the arena now, Fred? Because I'm, this... I'm literally, I, I, I've come outside, but it's deafening. Mate, um, even outside, it, it, it's unbelievable. That light show that is currently going on in that arena looks absolutely ridiculous. I'm assuming, like you just yeah, said. I can see it, I can see it, I can see listen, it. Listen, you, you have painted a great picture here. There is no ring in this arena right now. So just imagine, I, I imagine this is a pop concert. We're, we're led to believe that Eminem's about yeah, to rock up. Is this right? Exactly like that. It's like a big circular platform in the middle of the uh, arena, which you could imagine people performing on. Of which there's they no are. Ring. Right. There's boy, no ring. Boys, I've got to say here, by yeah. the way, the ring, as yes. we all know, Mike Goodall puts the rings up. Everyone that knows Mike Goodall knows that he's about 104. Yeah. He's not getting any younger. Yeah, I love you he saying puts that. that ring. <laughs> I know he will. <laughs> <laughs> he loves me, Mike. Don't worry about it. How is he going to get the ring up in the next, let's Mate. say, 10, 15 minutes? Well, listen, we've all seen fun. we've all seen Rocky IV, haven't we, Fred? coming through the right? four. I think right. coming this is what's happening. <laughs> we've all seen Rocky IV. Rocky no. IV. When Ivan Drago's already in the ring and he comes up through yeah. the through the bottom, doesn't he? Yeah. And then Apollo Creed comes in through the sky. You know what I mean? There'll be some I'll mad stuff. That. Is There's that where you go, John? Where Fraser, you put Fraser, money? I've got a question actually. Yeah, yeah, it's, it's, I, I, Fraser, I, I, I've got a really important question. Yeah. And everyone who goes to a sporting event, we all get really hungry. Like about this sort of time. <laughs> what food is on offer That's in the it. venue? That's what it. is the food choice? What have you gone for?
Fraser's gone. Oh, gone. Tip, I've told, I've right, told, right, so right, he's gone. I've told. Right, so we're right. He's gone. He's gone. He's gone. Let's, let's, let's put a bet on it, boys. Has he gone to the Chinese stall or has he gone to the burger stall? Both. I'll do both if you if you had a choice. He's gone. I'm just looking at this for, for those that are not uh, cons- obviously if you're consuming this just by listening to Talksport or via the Talksport YouTube channel. At the moment, listen, I'm not up on my uh, pop stars or rap stars or anything like that, but there is a performance going on in the middle of this arena. It looks absolutely incredible. It genuinely looks like that I'm watching the Brit Awards or or some type of concert that is currently taking place uh, inside the arena. We know full well in the space where these people are dancing and rapping and doing whatever they're doing, there's going to be a ring appearing yeah. for these guys to perform in. But listen, Nicola, my wife, has just texted me saying she has never seen anything like this before. Is this a new era for boxing? Is this a way? Is this the way, way forward? Because I mean, that is spectacular what we're seeing here. Yeah, uh, we believe that uh, Mr. Clark has joined. We managed to get a better connection and get him back on. Uh, away from the performance that is currently going on, because this is mind blowing. Johnny just asked you a big question there, uh, Fraz. What's the uh, what's the grub like? What's the concessions like? What are you managing to get uh, to eat in between these fantastic performances? Well, there's lots of like, stands on. You can get anything. You could even get. Uh, Big John could come and order himself a Chinese dinner. I think. <laughs> no way. Who's got that? Uh, Must be good. Yeah, he'd uh, uh, it, 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 love it here. Honestly, uh, yeah. So far, I cannot knock your place. Yeah. Listen, I need to get your thoughts on what you've just witnessed there, mate. Obviously, uh, we've we've spoken to you many times about the opportunity to fight for a British title. You've just witnessed uh, Fabio Wardley do his thing against David Adley. What did you make of it? Um, you know, I have to say congratulations to Fabio. You know, even though a lot of the time me and him don't see eye, eye to eye, I think I think he performed well. Um, but I did see a lot of cheeks in, in the performance as well that I think I could capitalise on. I don't think he had much in front of him in terms of David Adelaide. I didn't, he didn't really perform how I thought he was going to. Um, but it was an entertaining fight, but a bit one-sided. You know, for saying, I think people had it built as a 50-50, and so did I, to be fair. Mm. But, um, you know, Fabio firmly controlled it, honestly. He didn't, he didn't look in trouble at all throughout the Fight. He looked like he was coasting it. Top performance, wasn't it? Behind his jab, yeah. managed to get the job done and uh, mm. obviously uh, progresses himself. Um, we've lost him again, have we? You see, this is, this is the problem. What it is, is that this amazing show that is currently going on in the arena is taking up everybody's bandwidth, no doubt. Um, the amount of data that they are throwing through this light show that I'm currently watching is probably affecting uh, our connection uh, to uh, to Fraser Clark. Listen, you're right, you're... you're you're, you're connected. What's the what's the what's the conversation about Frez regarding dates of when he will be out um, uh, performing next? Listen, I think that Fraser had a very 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 close eye on that. We know that he was that, that, that he was the mandatory contender for the British title, so he's there or thereabouts. I know that he was looking for the winner of this contest. It was a fight that interested him. I know that's a fight that he wants to go into next. So you know who knows? You know that's, he didn't go over there. You know, just for the Fury fight, he went over there with a close eye mate, on this. He's gone for the Eminem concert, man. That's Absolutely. what he's gone for. I mean, this is insane, man. Isn't it? Like, honestly, I am actually blown away because we heard it was going to be a big event, didn't we? We knew it was going to be a big event. We know what the Saudis do. We've been there before, Adam, three or four times. This is crazy. But never something Not to this like sort this. of level. This is like Super Bowl stuff, isn't it? When they do it at the half Great time. Great comparison. Yeah. Great comparison, mate. This is the Super Bowl of boxing. That's what we're watching right now. Um, we will keep you across this. Liam McCourt, who is uh, attempting to become Bellator World Champion, she's going to be taking on Chrissy sidebook hopefully that's going to take place in Belfast she's going to be on the show next give us a little bit of insight to the differences between boxing and MMA don't go anywhere
Fight Night with Adam Catterall and Gareth A. Davies on Talk Sport, the home of boxing. It's all Rosen strike is out Whoa. in Ganu. Out bad. So Francis and Ganu with his fourth consecutive vicious first oh. round knockout. I would never bet against a man who took two years to get across the desert in detention camps to stay alive. <laughs> So it's going to be a hell of a fight. It doesn't matter how, what kind of a technical striker you are. Francis Ngannou has freak power. This fella comes to fight. He's got heart. He can punch. And he comes to fight. However he goes, the victory will be mine. Uh, you listen to Fight Night on TalkSport. I'm Adam Cattrall, Spencer Oliver, and uh, Johnny Fisher are alongside me. We're currently watching a concert uh, I'd never thought I'd say that on Fight Night, but there's a concert currently going on uh, in the arena in Riyadh. It's obviously all part of the pomp and ceremony of what we are building up towards. I'm fully expecting a ring to appear out of thin air in a minute. I don't know. Uh, maybe on Aladdin's carpet or something. I don't know. I don't know what's going to happen, but this is a very different experience consuming boxing than anything that I've ever seen before. It's very Super Bowl halftime, as Johnny pointed out during the break to us, and it's a good assessment. That That's currently what we are watching. We will keep you across it. In the meantime, um, I'm going to uh, bring you uh, to the attention of Leah McCourt. She is uh, a young lady that is uh, on the rise in Bellator. Fingers crossed she's going to get herself uh, a world title fight. And I caught up with her a little earlier on to preview Fury and Garnet. Oh, so, so relieved. as like such a big... Obviously, after the cat fight, I was like, it's so much... Um, pressure and like I had so much uh, opportunities I knew it was going to come after you know a big performance and I just knew I had to get it done and yeah so so relieved and so happy just for the team and for everybody and my family and friends that were there just to you know because they know they know I know they know my potential and I well you know I always like I don't know doubt myself I was just happy to get a good performance and a great win. Well it's been one of those that it's been very you've been on the cusp of something really special like you've just mentioned, obviously, the Zingano fight. On the cusp of something, but didn't necessarily go your way. Then this, yeah. ob this obviously opportunity came along against Sarah McMahon. A lot of people know, obviously, who she is. And it was one of those, it felt like, I don't know whether you felt like this going in there, but it felt like a bit of a make or break moment for you. Go yeah, in there, do definitely. the business, because there's something on the horizon that could be really special. Yeah, because it's, like, it's like the third fight that was potentially going to lead to a title fight, because obviously... I I had my fight with Sinead and it was like that the winner of that was going to fight for the title yeah. and then the winner of Pat was going to fight for the title and it's like definitely this is like my time like we've you know been here a, a long time and I have so much um, I've had big fights hard fights and uh, yeah definitely feel like this is like God's plan and it's like my, my time in to, to have this fight and to become world champion Well now we're here and what a way to be able to do it by taking on one of the greatest ever uh, it's only where, yeah, it's the only way I wanted to do it. It's like I, I was obviously, you know, I'm a Cat Singano fan as well, but I, if I was going to be fighting for the title and the world title, it was, it, I've always said it has to be against Cyborg and it has to be in Belfast. I think, you know, that my fairy tale might come true, hopefully. What, what are the latest noises on it regarding it happening in, in Belfast? Well, I know her team and she's agreed and they're up for coming to Belfast, you know. It, I think she's always wanted to fight in Ireland and mm. there's been so many Dublin shows and I just keep I've said but the Bellwood Belt have always said we'll do Belfast if you fight for the title. And um that's yeah, you know, there's been so many big iconic boxing nights in Belfast and I just have always dreamed of you know bringing such a big a big show and such a massive fight, you know, for the Belfast fans mm. and I think it might finally happen. Well, for those that obviously are across MMA, they'll know full well there's a lot going on with various franchises buying other franchises and things merging together and every, all this business side of stuff. Fingers crossed they can get all that done relatively quickly because there's a, a fighter here that wants a, a title date and she wants it in Belfast. Yeah. So if we could get her a date, that'd be absolutely wicked uh, and get the legend that is Chrissy Cyborg over here to, uh, to take her on. Um, yeah. Now, away from that, I want your expert opinion on something, mate, right? Because tonight, of <laughs> course, we've got a boxer a very good boxer uh, taking on a very good martial artist. Two big heavyweights having a little bit of a go at it. For people that are uneducated, can you explain the difference between MMA striking and boxing striking and how that is going to play out in some way this evening with these two guys? 
in, in my opinion, it's it's totally different. Um, the, the 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 if you but I hate sparring boxing only because or if I'm sparring boxers in three minute rounds, it's a completely different pace and range and style of fighting compared to MMA because you're constantly thinking about kicks, takedowns. You're worried about um distance distance control. You know to get elbows. There's so much going on in MMA and to be restricted to boxing only. Um, it's I find it incredibly diffi- difficult and it incredibly difficult on your gas tank as well because you're so used to um wrestling grappling it's it's a completely different type of cardio um mm-hmm. I think you've seen that in Connor against Mayweather yeah. towards the later on he tired and it is it's the saying is obviously a boxer can box all day if you take a boxer and put him in an, an MMA he's gonna get tired really quickly as soon as it hits the mat as soon as it you know, you start grappling. It's just mentally, it's, it's different as well because I think Tyson knows he could go all day standing, and it's going to be difficult for Francis. And it's his first ever boxing fight as well. Like, could he have a tougher task than fighting Tyson Fury in his own discipline? I think it's going to be, you know, it's it's going to be hard to bet against Tyson doing whatever he wants tonight. But I'm excited to see it. It's a big, a big payday for Francis. A big. You know, it's great to see him out there and all the showbiz around it and all the, the big big um, celebs there. So I think, I'm, I'm so happy for him. He's, he's got this big fight. I, I, do you know something? I couldn't agree more with you on, on the Francis thing. I think the majority of boxing fans have been a little bit all over the place with the heavyweight division. And if one man's going to benefit from the carnage of heavyweight boxing at the moment, I'm glad that it's Francis Ngannou. The fellow has got an yeah. unbelievable story. He's risen to the top of the UFC, of course. Mm-hmm. He's a wonderful guy. Every time I meet him, he leaves you with a massive smile on your face. And you can't begrudge him the moment, even though the chance okay. this evening is maybe 1%, 2%. You can't... And you know what? And I love that. It's like, and I still think, in the back of my mind, it could happen, it could land a shot. Because it's like, as a fighter, I always think for myself, I have to have the mindset as no matter who you're fighting or no matter what, you're doing like when I go into jiu-jitsu tournaments and I'm fighting people that completely only do jiu-jitsu all day yeah. there's always a way to win there's all you can always find a way to win and I think I I've always had that mindset and I think you know Francis might has to go into has to go into it tonight thinking that as well obviously you've got ambitions of becoming the Bellator world champion let's say that that is now done right you are the champion if an opportunity, no, I'm not boxing. Ah, well, no. listen. If the opportunity comes along and someone sticks a big bag of cash on the table, mate, you not fancy that little boxing match? Oh, uh, I don't know. I don't think so. It's, it's. I just find it. I don't. And I find it really difficult to be restricted so much because obviously I come from a bar- grappling background. Yeah. I love Thai, so to only box, I find it like it's complete. Um, I don't know. It's just so different to, to what to what we do, but I can't see it happening though. <laughs> uh, the brilliant Leah McCourt joining me earlier on uh, to talk about hopefully a upcoming fight with uh, uh, Chrissy Cyborg. Finger crossed that takes place in Bellator and give us a little bit of an insight into what we're about to experience uh, with Tyson Fury and Francis Ngannou. Whilst uh, you were recapping that interview there and having a little bit of a chat, um, one of the most amazing light shows performances. I mean, the gents, Johnny Fisher and Spencer Oliver, were just waxing lyrical uh, during that interview there, comparing it to the Olympics opening ceremony, Super Bowl halftime shows. That's the, the the level, if not higher level, than what we have just witnessed with the amount of rappers, pop stars that came out to perform uh, inside the arena whilst there wasn't a ring present. Mm-hmm. Then, <laughs> out of the floor, that's right, the ring arrived. Very similar to what we experienced in Rocky Four. Mr. Ngani or, or Mr. Fury were not in the ring at the same time, like we saw with uh, with uh, Mr. Drago in the films. But the ring appeared out the floor, and the concert finished. I'm blown away, mate. I'm absolutely blown away. Me, me and Big Johnny Fisher <laughs> sitting there, or little Johnny Fisher, so I say, <laughs> shouldn't say, shouldn't yeah. get that confused. Yeah. Actually, I'm sitting there. <laughs> seems we calling you little. I'm, I'm, I'm little Johnny. Yeah, John. yeah, you're little John. So yeah, we're just sitting here like. We're mesmerised. We're yeah. blown away, right? I mean, who expected? I know when you said, oh, what are we going to see? A ring appear from the floor like we did in yeah, Rocky Four. I didn't really think that was going to happen. 
I thought we were going to see old Mike Goodall running around trying to wrap a few ropes up. What this was you is seen for the absolutely last, yeah. nuts. What was you seen for the last 45 minutes? People would pay for that on their own. People go and pay to go and see like a concert. We just witnessed the concert. Is that not the idea, though? Yeah. That's what I'm saying. Is that not the idea to capture this new generation and this new audience? Yeah. They've seen what the YouTubers are doing and going, do you know what? We can do that, but we can do that ten times yeah. better. Forget this boxing in the way that it looks like this, all dated and, you know, he's got yeah. only, only your boxing fans go there. They have captured an audience there where you haven't got to be a boxing fan. You can be anything. That's just a great yeah. night out. Well, if like one percent of them, them rappers fans who all got millions of followers, they start watching the boxing from this. It's just you capture a new audience, as Spencer said, one hundred percent. And they've got Chinese stalls out there, mate. Oh, mate, we should have been, got to get out there. No, Chinatown. <laughs> we've got Chinatown here, so we're all right. We're, we're in the city, so I can go there all on the right. way back. <laughs> uh, stick with us uh, because these two gentlemen are going to not these two gentlemen in the studio, but Mr. Fury and Mr. Ingunner are going to make their ring walks very, very shortly, uh, and we are going to uh, stick with the live stream that is available on the YouTube. Uh, to the TalkSport Boxing YouTube channel, so get stuck into that. Don't be going anywhere. This is Fight Night on TalkSport. and 1053 medium wave online on your mobile on the app and on your smart speaker talk sport this is it the time has come get in the ring and go the distance with fight night with adam catterall you're better than that on talk sport the home of boxing
Uh, you are listening to Fight Night on Talk Sport. I'm Adam Catterall. It's an absolute pleasure to be in your company. I'm in the company of Spencer Oliver and Southern Area Heavyweight Champion Johnny Fisher. We're about to welcome to the ring Francis Ngannou on his professional boxing debut against the WBC Heavyweight Champion of the World, Tyson Fury. We've all give our thoughts on the fight itself, but we're here now. Um, and you're more than welcome to come and join us. All three seven one seven double two double three double four. If you've got thoughts on it, uh, you can watch along as well on the Talksport Boxing YouTube channel for a little bit of fun. This is Fight Night on Talksport. Ladies and gentlemen, here is the former unified world champion in his second reign as king of the heavyweights, introducing the Gypsy King, Tyson Fury! Big eye, come down, go around, goes Dillian White. That was an absolutely huge shot. I need to be on my A game because there's more on the line now than a boxing fight. If I lose to a number one contender or another champion, it's like, well, he lost to a champion, whatever. But if I lose to an MMA guy, I'm never going to be able to show me face in public again. If Fury loses this fight, it would be the biggest upset in heavyweight boxing history. I'm the best at what I do because I'm the most elusive world champion in history. I don't think he can. I don't think anyone can land it on me. That's a fact. And if they do, I'll just get back up. So maybe he's underestimating him, and that's about the only chance that I think that Francis Ngannou will have. Um, you listen to TalkSport, this is Fight Night. Just watching pictures uh, coming to us from Riyadh, where Cristiano Ronaldo is about to take his seat. Riyad, uh, Rio Ferdinand is there, Conor McGregor in attendance. The who's who of the celebrity and sporting world uh, all seem to be uh, taking their positions in anticipation of the main event, which is uh, about to get underway. We've just witnessed one heck of a concert. This is boxing, but not as we know it, Spence. They've been telling us that they're going to change the game. Okay. Now, as a contest, I think we all kind of know what is about to, part, to to play out in front of our eyes, and that is where maybe the majority of the critique has come, especially uh, from myself, no doubt about that. Uh, but from an event, from, an, from a spectacle point of view, I've got to take my hat off, man. This, is, this is absolutely bonkers. It's another level. It's another level. Well, we always knew it was going to be big because that's what the Saudis do. But, I mean, they have, yeah, they've surpassed anything I even thought was going to happen. Johnny, I don't know what you think about this, but it's like... The who's who yeah. of the celebrity world is there. Every boxer you yeah. imaginable is there. What an event. It's a great event. Great to see all the names there, like you said, Ronaldo, Ferdinand. Listen, the spectacle, you've got to take your hat off to it. But for my personal opinion, I'm not interested in, in that stuff. I don't yeah. know about you guys. I don't care about that. Yeah. I want to watch the fights. But yeah. as you said, it might be appealing to these other guys, the younger generation. That's what I just think it is capturing that... that that generation, I think it's that capturing the imagination yeah. of people. It's doing mm. something different, doing something the, yeah, the unexpected. We, we've got to be dead honest here, right? I'm, listen, Johnny, I'm with you, right? Yeah. I want to buy a ticket to go to a good night of boxing. Yeah. I want to sit down. I want to watch at least six good contests, 50-50s, yeah. earlier title fights, British title yeah. fights, world title, whatever, mate. That's what I want to do. That's my choice. But I'm fully understanding that the younger demographic... When I, you know, they're not falling in love with our sport, sadly. Some of them are obviously going over to martial arts, and that's great. And the reason why they're going over there is because they're getting 50 50 fights, the best to fight and the best more often. The show is far better put together in the UFC, which is attractive. I completely get that. The boxing fandom seems to be going to this misfits world and, and taking on uh, people that have big. Uh, YouTube audiences that are leveraging boxing in order to bring people towards the sport. And again, you've kind of got to look into that and think, is it a good thing, is it a bad thing? Yeah. Yeah. Boxing has to do something to attract itself to young fans. Now, I'm not saying this is right. This absolutely... I'm a 42-year-old fella, man. This doesn't a no. appeal to me. No, I'm, I'm yeah, going to be I, dead honest about that. But you can appreciate the uh, spectacle of it. And uh, talking about what you said, Adam, how are we going to attract people? Well, it's quite a simple fix. Away from all of this, this, this show, the best fight the best. Right. There you go, right? That's what needs to happen. There Forget all the other rubbish around go. it. The best have got to fight the best. Yeah. Now, you, you've you highlighted something there because I've kind of liked uh, some of the noises that Eddie Hearn has been making recently about this particular topic. He's been talking about 
Um, fighters have got to take more risks. Fans have got to be more empathetic to loss as well. We mm -hmm. can't put too much pressure on mm -hmm. fighters. You take a risk in your sixth, seventh, eighth fight, you lose it. That's not the end of it. Listen, mm -hmm. man, we give you a little bit of a pat on the back. I'm still going to be here. I actually admire what you've done. I'm still buying a ticket and I'll come back off the back of that loss to see what you do. I always want to see the rise of a fighter. What happens next? We've got to have those type of attitudes. Broadcasters have got to get a little bit stiffer with promoters and say, stop serving up rubbish. Mm -hmm. Because for years and years and years, boxing promoters have been over-promising and under-delivering. And we have been served on television platforms, uncompetitive fights where you could look at the card and go, red corner night tonight. Yeah, of the, course. All the red corners going to win there tonight. That. Now, as a boxing fan and a consumer, I want to see a bit of competition. I want to. I don't yeah, want to know what's going to happen. I want to turn up and think, I don't know, mate. I have no idea but, what's going to happen but tonight. Boys, do you think that this is actually now the changing of the times? Because that is been sort of forced you know Eddie Hearn has been open about it and said yeah. listen I will shrink my camp if the fighters are not taking the fights that I want them to do yeah. I want more 50 foot fights like you say I agree with what you said there Adam is in like yep yeah, I think Eddie's talking the right language yeah. we want to see that and yeah. I think that Ben Shalom will follow Frank Warren will follow as well because I think that people are fed up with going to these cars where you can look down there and go we know won that. Right. Uh, sorry, from, from, my, from my perspective, uh, thinking about it from appealing to the mass market, when they look at a boxing show, if they've got Fury Usyk, like the, the average Joe isn't looking, oh, what's on the undercard? No. Yeah, they're, all they're caring about is the top guys. And the top yeah. guys have gone, navigated their route because us guys coming through, we have got to navigate to think how we can get mm. be, get best get to the top. But once you're at the top and you've made your millions and you are a Fury and you are an Usyk and you are a Joshua and you are at the top, why not all fight each other? So, You're all so, going to make 20, 30 million quid each. Yeah. Just do so it. Johnny, so about us, it don't matter about the undercard. Uh, it's about the big names fighting each other. Yeah, but what I'm saying is, how do we get the public interested in the undercard? Yeah. So if we go to the YouTube show, we go to KSI, Tommy Fury, that arena is packed mm. at 7pm 7, uh, 7 right. from the first fight. So how do we... How do we do that? How do we how do we change that? Because I think that's, that's what right. you got to do. You have got to capture the imagination for the undercard fights as well. Right. And I think by putting 50-50 fights where you go, this can do. Look at the undercard. Okay. We don't know who it is, but we but, know it's going to be a blinder. And that's got to be complemented by the fact that their personalities and selling themselves as entertainers as well. That's yeah. what we can learn from them. And guys. there's also stresses on people like us, broadcasters, to be honest with the audience. And, and to call it as it is. Listen, yeah. we, 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 we can see there are plenty, as I mentioned right at the start of the show, there are plenty of media outlets that are here because this does numbers for them. This generates them money um, through views, all right? Now, I don't know what narratives they're all spinning on their own individual networks, but I know of a card that is coming up that Frank Warren's actually put on, that Magnificent Seven card. Yeah. He's highlighted that. I think that's coming up uh, in the not-too-distant future where mm -hmm. Nick Ball and Isaac Dogby are going to be headlining. Yeah, Nathan, Nathan Heaney's fight. on it against Denzel. Great Bentley. fight. There's a, there's a couple on there that are all really competitive. Good British title yeah. fights, Commonwealth title fights, all this type of stuff. Now, I know that that's going to go under the radar with the majority of fight mm. fans. Yeah. But us, in the trade, in the game, we'll I look that. at that card and I think, there's seven fights there. They're absolute bangers. Mm. Yeah. It's up to us to highlight that, to shove that down people's necks and say, listen, just trust me on this, right? Mm. I've been telling you that this is this, that and the other. Please trust me, buy a ticket, come to this. Uh, you will fall in love. You'll so, fall you're in love. Right. Mate, I know how we highlight that. Give talk sport the rights. <laughs> <laughs> so but you're, right, but you're, you're right about exposing people to it. I had the perfect example. It's slightly off on a tangent, but my brother doesn't really watch rugby. Watch the World Cup. And he was exposed to the great, like it's been one of the best World Cups ever. People have got to sit there and watch it for themselves because sure. we know how great boxing is. Yeah, and that's what people got to watch it. But we've got to get people interested. People like us get them interested in it. Mm -hmm. That and and like like I said, I'm pretty convinced that if we have then a regularity, especially on big platforms, we've got TNT tonight that are obviously doing this. Yeah. Sky Sports massive platform, and we've got the Zone obviously uh, with Matchroom yeah. that are doing great things too. If all those platforms. I think sometimes we saturate the market, don't we? We want to be out every week. We want to have something every week. Well, okay. Let's pull it back a touch. Let's try and deliver one quality card a month. Let's start there. Let's let's do, let's do one card with six belting fights on it once a month. And then fight fans at the end of the month when they've got the disposable income, if they've got that disposable income, can say, do you know something? That's the one I'm going to go yeah. to. I'll spend me 30 quid Wait, and I'll no, go there. No, but you've just nailed it. Because if you go, if you, if you mention that we've got TNT, we've got Sky Sports... We got the zone, mm -hmm. three big networks. Mm -hmm. So if they all do one a week, no one's treading on anyone's toes, yeah. and you can get wicked fights. And exactly, we work so together. You go. You've got to work together, and we can have a week to get over the last three. There's so much ego involved in it. This is boxing. This is high level sport. 
there's ego, but it would be such so much better for all of us if we could just swallow a little bit of pride yeah. and work together. And that's something I would encourage. Look, Eddie, talk to Ben Shalom. Talk to right. Frank Warren. Absolutely. Be on the same page. Yeah, you might have arguments with each other. I know it's not... I'm living in La La Land a bit here, but just talk to each other. But it's the, historically, the, they've always yeah. tried to bury each other. That's and the don't, You don't need to. You can make yourself both bigger and have competition from, from all stuff. And you do it by growing audience. If you look, again, people will always compare the current boxing model to what uh, Dana White and the UFC have done. I know it's difficult because yeah. obviously it's singular, he's yeah. his own promoter, it's one belt, one weight division, all this. I get, I completely get it. But if you actually look at the model, the model is set up to benefit the fan. What is the, the, the fan gets the most out of that particular sport. Now there's criticisms of course when it comes to the athletes and the fighters are they getting what mm. they should be getting. I agree. All athletes should be getting a lot more. I completely agree with that. But that model is set up to benefit the fan. The fan is always at the forefront of Dana White's decisions in order to give them the best experience, hence the matchmaking, all that type of stuff. If we concentrated more on the fan, then everything else, it'll take a bit of time. We're not talking like it's going to change tomorrow, but it goes over a period of time. Everybody benefits. Everybody benefits yeah. within time. And you're right, Johnny, in what you've just said there. We just seen a British title fight tonight. Those two lads assigned to two different promoters on two different networks. Okay, the British Boxing Board of Control have ordered that fight. So you're kind of forced to a situation and you have a purse bit yeah. of victory. All right, I get that. But we can create fights like that without having to go down those nav uh, avenues. I agree. If we all scratch each other's back. So if I Eddie Earn says, right, Frank, I want to make this fight. Can we have it on our network? And I'll tell you what, I'll give you this. It's got to be equal footing. You have that over there on yours. We'll have this on ours. If you can go a week after us, that'd yeah. be brilliant because then fight fans don't have to choose. That's how in the real world, that's how business is done. Yeah. That's how it's done week in, week out, whether you're a tradesman or you do whatever, you, you give and take. But when, but that's how you, you do it. When you explain it like that, it's not really difficult, is it? I mean, all it is about knocking your heads together, sitting down in a room with the big promoters and saying, right, this is the way yeah. we do it. This is the way it works. And everyone feeds from the pie. We're not trying to bury anyone else. And the sport would grow massively. Yeah. Mm. But, it's an ideal, it's an idealistic <laughs> thing, isn't it? It's right. like me and Big John oh. saying we're going to share the last chicken ball. It's not going to happen, is it? <laughs> it ain't going to happen. Uh, just in case you're wondering what you're tuning into, uh, you are listening to uh, Fight Night on Talksport. I'm Adam Cattrall, Johnny Fisher, and Spencer Oliver uh, alongside me. We've just witnessed uh, one of the craziest concerts ever pre-main uh, event. So we've had the whole uh, what you class as undercard. British title fight was on the top of the undercard. Fabio Wardley came through that uh, in magnificent fashion. Uh, that was a couple of hours ago. It's coming up to now. Uh, we've had a concert. We've had a change of arena. Uh, we've now got a bit of pomp and ceremony with a few promos and various things like that to build up uh, towards uh, Tyson Fury and Francis Ngannou. I'm pretty confident we're going to get some national anthems. We might even get a concert here from Eminem. He's going to walk. Don't, don't forget about the ring coming out the floor. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Sorry. The ring came out the floor. Don't at one forget particular that bit, point. mate. Yeah. Absolutely <laughs> bonkers. I've never seen anything like this as a spectacle, as an event. Absolutely, they are throwing the kitchen sink at this. It's going to be interesting to see what this looks like once the first bell goes. Yeah. Listen, we'll, we'll all make comment on that as it goes along. But from an event point of view, they are absolutely going to town on it. Um, and I've got to say, if I was into that vibe, I'd be absolutely thoroughly impressed. I'm here for boxing. I want to see some boxing. Let's hopefully we're, see. Hopefully we're going to get some boxing in a moment or two. Absolutely. Listen, I'm into that vibe as well. I'm enjoying it actually. Yeah. I'm, I'm sort of very open sure to it. Thing. So it's, it's great. I think it's fantastic. Yeah. yeah. Mm. Um. After this, because we're all anti. Listen, I don't want to speak for you boys. I'm anticipating this to be very, um, thunder lips, rocket, but very exhibitiony is what I'm expect. What, yeah, what, what, I, what I'm expecting. I'm with you. All right. I've got a lot of love and prayers for Francis Ngannou, but in the boxing ring, he's not beating Tyson Fury, in my opinion. Stranger things have happened, but that's, mm -hmm. that's what yeah. I, how I yeah. think this is going to play out, okay? So once this finishes, are we anticipating Alexander Usyk to be nose-to-nose -nose with uh, yeah. Tyson Fury? I yes, think that's, that, that's, that's, that's yes, got to be, got to be. I think we get the announcement, Tyson Fury, come, Tyson Fury comes through unscathed, no injuries. We get the announcement December the 23rd in the ring automatically after the fight. That's where it's at. And yep. from... What we've just been speaking about there, about growth of the sport and making the fights that we all want to see, it's kind of imperative now that that fight has to happen. It's got to happen because it brings it back to what we were talking about, bringing people back to fundamentalist boxing and pure, purist boxing. But we've done the, the bit where it's engaging everyone, but this is what our sport's all about. Mm -hmm. The best fight and the best. Ole Alexander Usyk, Tyson Fury, that is what engages people because that is 
high level, the top level, the heavyweight kings fighting each other. That's what we want to see. Would you mind the pomp and ceremony, the concert, the trapeze artist, whatever is about to happen in, in this thing, I've no idea. Would you mind it if you knew in a moment or two, 15 minutes, whatever it takes, Tyson Fury and Alexander Usyk are about to make a walk? Yeah, I don't... I, honestly, I've, I've got no strong feelings about it. I don't mind it. But it's just, for me, it's an unnecessary thing. I don't look at this, and I'm not going to watch mm. Francis Ngannou, Tyson Fury, or Usyk versus Tyson Fury to watch the, the trapeze artist and watch people <laughs> rap. I'm <laughs> yeah. not going there for that. Yeah, yeah. But it's great for the people in the venue. It adds to the experience. I understand it. Mm -hmm. And it's, it's just, a spectacle, it, people talking about it on my WhatsApp, but loads of people just going off saying, what's this all about, all this? Mm. It's getting people talking about it, so it's doing the job. Mm. Mm. What about yourself? Uh, yeah, I'm, if, I'm if you, totally... If you, if you knew that there was an, a main event coming up and you're thinking, I've no idea what is about to happen in that main event, this is why I'm here, could you put up with all the... Oh, yeah. pomp and ceremony absolutely! I think you, yeah, as as a spectacle, it makes it even better knowing that what you've got at the end is you've got a fifty-fifty fight for the undisputed world heavyweight title where you don't really know what's going on, and you've got this spectacular show going on before. I, I, for me, mate, that's what it's all about. But it I doesn't it. it doesn't prevent you from if that if all this pomp and ceremony didn't happen, it wouldn't make a difference, would it? You'd no, still it, it, come and watch it the wouldn't fight. make a difference. But yeah. I think that what that does is it captures another audience yeah. as the, well. The, so yeah. just do you know what yeah. I mean? So it just it magnifies everything. Mm. Yeah, for yeah. me. What, what have you... Yeah. Well, Do you know can, what I mean? We can see Tyson. He looks like he's getting ready to rock and roll. Yeah. He's just about to put on his robes and make his way uh, to the ring uh, very shortly, as is uh, Francis Ngannou. What have you made of the uh, the promotional material uh, for this event? Some of the videos have been, like, movie quality, Mate, you, they? That's what I'm saying. Yeah. You can't... You can't... That's what I'm saying. It's taking it to another level where you haven't got to be a cat boxing fan and you're going to just look at that and go... You can, it's going gonna, it's gonna to capture your imagination. And that's what it's all about. It's Tyson Fury, you know, he's, he's, he's a played crown. a great role. <laughs> he's putting a crown on, man. Oh, mate, but well, that's, you know... The king of Arabia, the, the, it looks the like. The king of Arabia, mate. The king of the, the king of the heavyweight division right now. And another thing for the last two weeks, it's been non-stop, hasn't it, in your face all yeah. the time. Every time you open your phone, always boxing material, Francis Ngannou Fury. It's been, it has been non-stop. Like, like your old man plays a great part in yeah. your career and everything yeah. else, and he's captured his own imagination. His dad does the same. Big his dad John, does big exactly John what he's... Yeah. In, Brilliant as well, you know, and that's what it's all about. It's called entertainment, capturing the imagination. That is the world we and live in. Eyes, eyes on it. That's eyes it, man. On, move on, 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 man. Come on, yeah. we can't be like dinosaurs. No, we just got to right. move on. I agree. Times. I agree with you, Spence. The uh, well, Tyson Fury has just left the dressing room. It looks like he's going to be making his way uh, to the ring very, very shortly. Um, we're we're going to take a, a short break and catch our breaths and get ourselves uh, ready for the action as uh, Alexander Usyk flips up on the screen there. He looks like he's having a whale of a time. Maybe he's expecting Eminem as well. Maybe he's going to fight Eminem tonight. I've no idea what's going on. This is a crazy, crazy show. Uh, we're going to keep you across everything uh, here on TalkSport, all in association with William Hill. You've got to be over 18. It's who you play with. See the Sunday edition and the Sunday session on Talk Sport? I always get the two of them mixed up. Session, edition, they sound like the same thing. It's dead confusing. Which is why I've come up with a poem to help you tell them apart. Okay, here goes. There's the one called the Sunday edition. With two men on a weekly sports mission. The phone lines are humming and Henry Winter is coming. So make it your morning must listen. The Sunday Edition, your unforgettable full-colour Sunday sports supplement with legendary football writers Henry Winter and Sean Custis. Hear all about it tomorrow morning from 9 on Talk Sport. Go the distance with Fight Night oh, he's got down. on Talk Sport. That's how winning is done. The home of boxing. My lover's got no money, he's got his strong beliefs. My lover's got no power, he's got his strong beliefs. My lover's got no fame, he's got his strong beliefs. My lover's got no money, he's got his strong beliefs. One more and more, people just want more and more freedom and love. What he's looking for, one more and more, people just want more and more freedom and love. What he's looking for, free from desire, mind and senses purified, free from desire. Uh, 
uh, to Fight Night on Talk Sport. We've got a live stream going on right now. Uh, you can come and join us on the Boxing YouTube channel if you want. Uh, myself, Adam Cattrall. Uh, we've got Spencer Oliver and the Southern Area Champion of the Heavyweight Division. Johnny Fisher. We're all just kicking back. We've we've actually dropped a little bit of a clangor here because we could have had a Chinese this evening. We could have had a missed it, mate. Few drinks. I'm so hungry. All this talk about food. I am. I am so hungry. Mate, I can't wait to go. With, with the length of time that this uh, is all going on, mate. We, 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 mate, I've got I've got to say, right, we we're on air from nine till twelve. I've, well, I'm not going to lie. I thought I thought Johnny Fisher would have rocked up with a Chinese. Well, I was expecting the, uh, the the powers that be to have it ready for me. I'm the guest here. Do you know, what, do you know what it is? The producer Ed Huntley is Come down on, to him, mate. Yeah. Down to him. He knew what the game was. He yeah, knew what the game was. I think he's doing it on purpose. Nah, he's tight. Yeah. He don't want to put his hand in his pocket. Yeah, that's what it is. That's what it is. Nah. And um, I don't want that rubbish. He only had to ask all the lent him money. <laughs> uh, for, for for people that are just joining us. Uh, we've had a concert for around about an hour involving some of the world's best rappers and pop stars. This all took place after the undercard. So the undercard took place in a ring on the car park outside the main <laughs> arena. Uh, the, the British title fight concluded about, about an hour and a half ago by now. Uh, and Fabio Wardley came through with a fantastic stoppage over David Adelaide. Michael Buffer has actually just taken his spot in the ring. That ring, by the way, came out of the floor during the concert a moment or two ago. It's been an amazing light show. I want you to think maybe Olympics opening ceremony or Super Bowl halftime. That's basically what we've just experienced in Riyadh, Saudi Arabia. But it looks like, finally, there's going to be a little bit of action. It's currently 25 minutes past 11 UK time. They're three hours ahead, this lot. So what's that? Half two that they're rocking and rolling? It's, it's coming in. It's so coming in. It's about half past two in the morning. Buffer's just been on the microphone <laughs> giving it the big pomp and ceremony. And now I can see a lot of Cameroonian flags obviously waving around the arena, light displays kicking off, which insinuates that the Predator himself, that's right, the former UFC heavyweight world champion Francis Ngannou is about to make his way towards this ring. Listen, visually... Spectacular. Yeah. It's Mate, absolutely spectacular. Do you know what? Visually. Honestly, like, if I was not watching this on the screen and I was listening to you, I was in my car driving home from wherever I've been, and I'm listening to you explaining what's going on here. You'd be, with thinking, the ring you'd be like, thinking, what's he been drinking? Yeah, exactly <laughs> that. You took the words out of my mouth. I mean, what we're seeing here is just like, it's insane. It has blown me away. I'm, I'm sort of like, it's surreal. Yeah, surreal. It is. There you go. Uh, so we're still waiting for Francis. Obviously, they're, uh, they're milking it. Why not? Why not milk this? Listen, man, you've dreamt of this moment your entire this time. Is the, yeah. This is your moment. This is this is as big as it's probably ever going to get for Francis Ngannou in the boxing realm. And he is, as we can see, making his way now up the uh, runway. Oh, that's a lovely silhouette. Hold on, is that, that Francis? Is. That's great, yeah. That's a lovely silhouette. That's Francis, that. isn't that it? That is Francis, yeah. He's so he's got a crown on as well. Make two kings, it's mate. Battle of the baddest. That's wow. it. The kings... The UFC king and the boxing king. There you go. The kings are on the way uh, to this ring. Francis Ngannou, might I add, about to make his professional boxing debut. Madness. Absolutely madness. Buff is back on the microphone now, giving it the big one. And Francis Ngannou, who, by the way, I'd like to point out, has not competed professionally for about 18 months and in the in that off period he's had major major knee surgery now okay he's not going to be booting anybody tonight or making a, a play for anybody this evening you would think in the in the world of mixed martial arts it's all about throwing hands and what have you uh, but i'm sure those things do play uh, into uh, fruition when you're into your late 30s okay you're a heavyweight so therefore maybe your athletic prime can uh, last a little bit longer than the majority um but it is to be considered um we're still waiting for the fella. What are they doing here now? They're absolutely. I'm getting, I'm getting a little bit annoyed now. Yeah, the the proper dragging the living daylights they're, out of this, aren't they? They're building it up, mate. I like they a bit of pomp and ceremony, mate. But come on, man. Listen, Nazim Ahmed used to wind me up on his ring walk. Yeah. Oh, here he, we he, go. Oh, 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 is, oh, is this a flying chair? Is it would it would have mattered if we hadn't sat be... through a concert for an hour and fifteen minutes before. But you know, we're here now. At least there he is. Right. Let's see what we've got here now. Francis Ngannou. Oh, he's, he's sat in a throne, very similar to what uh, Tyson Fury did, if you yeah. remember when he came in uh, for the third Deontay Wilder contest in Las Vegas. He came in on a throne, and that throne was picked up and moved. I am Mike Tyson, dressed in a suit. Two robes as well. Not one robe, two robes. Yes, he has got two robes on as Francis Ngannou. And I am Mike Tyson has just taken uh, the crown off uh, Francis Ngannou's head as he uh, as he makes his way. He looks, do you know something? One thing I've been in, really impressed with with Francis this week, watching interviews and all that type of stuff, and Johnny, you highlighted this, right? It's his moment. He's come to this point now. He's, he's, he's not dream. overruled at all, is he? 
Mate, he's absolutely loving it. Look at him. He's like a kid in a sweet shop, the fella. He's having a whale mm. of a time. Dead relaxed, dead chilled, dead calm. He's drinking in every single moment. Johnny, a question I want to ask you. What's going through his head right now, this moment, right? Whoa. He's going in there. He's a huge, overwhelming underdog. Talk, to, talk us through it. What is going through his mind right now? Well, walking into the ring, listen, what I've experienced is only 1% of what these yeah. guys are doing. The world's watching. Like, it's just... I think there's no pressure. You're not expected mm. to do anything. Check this so out. Just, go in there. just to highlight it, just to highlight this yeah. now. Now, so what you're seeing now, yeah. for those that uh, aren't uh, familiar with the UFC, on the right hand side there, that's Kamaru Usman, former welterweight champion in the UFC. On the left hand side, it's Israel Adesanya, the former champion in the middleweight division. And obviously, Francis Ngannou was the former champion yeah. in the heavyweight division. Those three gentlemen were referred to as the three African kings of uh, MMA, of yeah, the yeah, UFC. Yeah, yeah. They're very, very close. They come from different parts of Africa, but they are very, very close. They've yeah. kind of been on a journey together. So Adesanya and Usman joining Francis Ngannou on that ring walk. Uh, to, as they just go past Eminem. Can you see him there? Yep. There he is. There's, there's Eminem. Just give him a high five. Just go past Eminem. Yeah, you know just like that. Mm. Just give think, Eminem a little yeah, high five. I think Fury will walk in with any boxers with him. I just think he'll come in on his own. Ooh. Or no, I think brothers. we're going to get an, we're going to get an, en an entrance from Fury. But talking about Ngannou, right? And I said to you, like talking about looking at him, and you go, look, it, this hasn't phased him at all. He's gone in there. He looks totally relaxed. And I'm sitting there thinking. How does he turn that nervous energy? Because he's got to be nervous. Yeah. Because he's going into a different discipline. How does he turn that nervous energy into positive energy? Well, that's what champions do. Champions feed off them nerves and they recognise. But you've got to re respect you've got to use with that nerves. Energy. Nerves, a lot of people mistake it for being scared. Man. You're not scared. It's just nervous. It's energy. energy. It's and energy. if you turn that into positive energy, yeah. it makes you a dangerous... And I think he's done that. You can't let the nerves... It is a real thing. The nerves, if you let it get the better of you, you, you will yeah. crumble. You it will makes foul. or breaks you. You makes or breaks yeah. you. And I felt it. I know nothing on the scale of this, but Fred Spencer will know as well more than me. You've got to utilise that. Absolutely. It's Absolutely. a power. It's an energy. Now, th despite what I think of the actual contest and Tyson Fury being involved in this contest, one thing that I know that this man is absolutely built for, it is this particular moment. Mm -hmm. This showbiz moment. As he's high five, who's he high five in there? Vander Holyfield? It's Holyfield and Lennox Lewis. Yeah. Mate, they are all on this ring wall <laughs> with him. This is absolutely bonkers. Yeah. Boys, boys, I want to throw one to you now before he does this. Right? Hey, Vander and Lennox are the doorman. No, <laughs> boys, this could be it, right? This could be it. But the question I want to ask you both is. Give me your favourite wing ring walk before he comes out because this could over this could do it. What is your favourite ring, ring walk, John? Oh. Can I just just, just Mine's gonna go I like the, uh, I like the Tyson on the Fury of the Spartans. That there was you go. The seam handed on the carpets. Look, just look yeah, at yeah, what's just happened. That Frank Bruno's there now. Yeah. Tyson Fury is now being walked to the ring <laughs> by heavyweight boxing greats. heavyweight greats, royalty, and about twenty other. Parts of the Gypsy King army. Mate, it is absolutely bonkers, the pomp and ceremony in around that. I remember the Eubank Senior on the motorbike. Was he on the I, motorbike I, as well? I've got another one. I know Nigel Benn, when he boxed Michael Watson at Finsbury Park, and he come in with the army because he was he was in the army. Really? And he had all the, yeah, all, all the army come in with him as well. That was a ma magical moment and as George well. George Groves I think on the about uh, ring big red bus. Because yeah. I think we're going to see something special. Uh, Johnny's just put up a good one there. The George Groves were yeah, on the bus, which was absolutely bonkers. That was great. Yeah. That was bonkers. Yeah. Yeah. The majority of Nazis was great. Do you remember when he came in on Halloween randomly through the graveyard and he punched oh, off the, uh, the, yeah, the head of the he's skeleton? The headstone sound, That's great. Yeah. yeah, he came in on the yeah. magic carpet, of course. The Kevin Kelly one where he kept Kevin Kelly waiting for absolutely ages <laughs> behind the uh, behind the screen. All sensational. Um, my own personal favourite one of Tyson Fury's, right, and I was lucky enough to be there. This was in, I think it was, against the to against Tom Schwartz, you mm. know. Yeah, he yeah, came, yeah, yeah, he, he yeah, came yeah. in with the Apollo Creed vibe. That was great. You know what I mean? And he did it just randomly. And it just came, he just pulled mate, out. It mate, all came it from anywhere. Wild. Yeah, that I've was got, great. I've got one. That was probably Frank my favorite. Bruno too. at Wembley, when he boxed Oliver McCall. That was sensational what was as well. I've Oliver McCall came in crying, didn't he? Frank yeah, Bruno yeah, coming yeah. to this massive, it was all like lit up, music playing, mm -hmm. bands coming in. It was mm -hmm. like insane. Yeah. Insane. It's just like, yeah, ring walks are a big part of boxing, aren't they? Well, look at this fella here, right? Because he loves it, he keeps delivering. Time and time again on the ring walk, we've seen plenty. We've seen him come into slow music, yep. top music. Patsy Klein. Uh, the old... I um, yeah, love a bit of Patsy yeah, Klein, to be fair. He does, yeah. Crazy, he, wasn't it? Crazy. That's right, absolutely. Crazy for people. Well, on that occasion, <laughs> he came in to the throne, didn't he? And yeah. he's just, obviously... What about when he ran into the ring? Because he, he'd overshot the ring walk, didn't he? <laughs> At Wembley, <laughs> Dillian White. He said, we've got to start running, the song's going to run out. He's doing the same thing now, yeah. man. What's he doing? He's doing a couple of laps. He's, he's running around the, the stage there, enjoying oh. himself... 
Uh, just milking the crowd of applause. He's doing, he's doing laps, yeah. Now, do you know what he's doing? He's warming up because he's been sitting down. Yeah, he's yeah, gone yeah, cold yeah. and it's very important because Ngannou could possibly come out of the traps like an absolute lunatic and try and land a shot. So Fury yeah. can't afford to go no. in there cold. Very sensible what he's done there because he's making it like it's a ring walk. But what he's actually doing is warming Little himself warm up. up. When you look at Fury and like this, do you think he's nervous now? He's got to be, hasn't he? Do you think, oh, absolutely. If you, or do you think he's that character? No. He's a special individual who doesn't get affected no, by it. No, because I think that if you, if you don't get nerves, there's something... There's wrong. something mentally wrong, man. Because yeah. everybody's got to suffer nerves. I yeah, think everybody, yeah. you know, when you talk to Mike Tyson. When did it stop? Yeah, yeah. When, when did it stop? stop? Oh, when the first bell rings. Yeah, the bell rings. When bell rings. When everybody gets out of the ring and when, it's just when, one on one. Yeah, yeah. yeah when it, no, well, when the that's nervous still. When but as soon as the bell going, goes, it is the bell. Yeah, as soon as that first bell goes. Bang. But the, the nerves are at the highest for me when the, you're both staring, you're waiting for the ref to go, like you point at the judges, yeah. like that. Yeah, yeah. That's the bit. That's yeah. the pinnacle of the And nerves. you've got the geezer looking at you straight down yeah, the yeah. eyes and you And the bell yeah. goes, it's like, right, done. Yeah, that's it. That's the worst over. You can hear the atmosphere from the crowd then just lift. I mean, that's, for me, the best part of ever covering any fight is that moment where... They're both standing there. Buffer's mm. done his thing, everything's wicked. And then the referee just reads his last instruction. Yeah. He says, right, boys, this is this, that, and the other. Touch gloves. And then I, I'm, listen, I'm in a really fortunate position that I get to annotate that particular moment and hand over to Spence mm. and the mm. Clark to the go and do the commentary. But that moment, you go back, I don't know, you might say something to your corner. Some people yeah, but your nerves are still pumping like this mad. Is, this is what I mean. Some people might pray in the corner, they might touch uh, the corner and all this type of stuff. But the atmosphere in the room just rises. You can hear the crowd going, and there is, for me, no better feeling than that moment there. You're just waiting for the referee to go, ding, ding. It's gone straight up to his face. And away, and away we go. Yeah. Uh, Tyson Fury making his room, uh, ring walk. I say ring walk. It was a ring run. He uh, finished <laughs> all the uh, ins and outs of what he was doing at the top of the ramp and then legged it to the ring. Uh, draped in green and gold with the old 316. Uh, Bible reference on the back of his uh, his clothing there um, and as uh, Johnny Fisher just uh, alluded to he went straight up to Francis Ngannou's face got right in there showed him a little bit of what's what Francis didn't flinch again I think Francis though will be feeling like he'll, he'll be knowing right I've got to now live up to the fact I'm, I'm in a boxing match now mm. which is not I've, I've never been here before in my life yeah, yeah but look, it, look I'm looking at the guy you can tell you know it, like this is this is the moment where you can tell like from their their body language, whether the, the, the occasion is starting to get to him. I think he yeah. does. He looks all right. Yeah, he looks good. The big error here, Johnny, would you agree? And Spence is Francis Ngannou thinking that he can box with Tyson Fury. Yeah, no, don't no. do that. He, he, fight he, him. he won't do that. He's not stupid. Fight him. You've got to fight him. Listen, Mike, Mike Tyson is a great student at the game. One thing Mike Tyson wouldn't have told Frank, Francis Ngannou is to stand up and try and box him. Yeah. Because he knows that Fury's got the height, Fury's got the reach, he's great behind the jab, he's great with his movement, he can switch southpaw, he won't know if he's coming and, out of the southpaw. And that don't mean don't don't set anything up. You've still got to set things up, obviously, but don't try and think you're going to, mm. like what Dillian did with Fury, come out and try and box all technical. He did eventually rough him up a bit. Yes, yeah, he, he came out southpaw. Yeah, like it. trying to be first, technically, yeah. trying to out Wit Fury, don't Why try and outwit him. That? No. Yeah. Yeah. Just yeah, whack yeah. that. If I was roll, him, roll, if I'm roll, in Ganis, go to the body. The body don't move like the head moves. He's got a big old body, Fury. He ain't as fast as he used to be. You've got to get him in a corner, rough him up, and just unload on that stomach mm. and then bring it up to the top. Mm. That's all I can say. I'm, roll, I'm, roll, I'm rolling the dice from round one, mate. I'm going there. Three rounds. Up. Three I'm rounds to go it. for I'm it. switching it downstairs. I'm going over the top. I might stick the nut in. Yeah. I'll tell you yeah. do what I've got to do. Put the elbows well, I'm just up. saying, yeah. you know what I mean? <laughs> you got three. We said you said off air. He's got three rounds. I think he has. I think he has. I think he has. Listen, there's a lot of muscle mass there, isn't there? He's yeah. a big old boy. It's going to gas at some point. Is he going? Is there a moral victory in being carried for ten rounds and not having a go? Listen, man, this is it. Yeah, you have dreamt of this moment now, haven't you? This is yeah. it. This is all that your life has led towards. And call card, it. Go card, for it. Cardio wise, he, he said it himself. UFC, or martial arts, the boxing, extremely different. Yeah. The cardio demands are very different. I've met Nganu when I saw him in the UFC Performance Institute, so heavily muscled. It's mm. like he's built with cement. Yeah. What's going to last longer, the ring walk or the fight? The ring walks. Do you think? Yeah. I think he's going to carry him. Do you I, think? Yeah, I think. I'm going round seven, boys. I'm going round seven, Tyson Fury. I'm, I'm gonna going go. before round six. Round, I'm, round four. Right, I'm going to go round six. That's where I, I think at the halfway point is when Tyson Fury will have had enough. Yeah. yeah. I think. He'll come out. This first three minutes is going to be really, really interesting because I think Fury's going to try. He's, he's obviously not going he's to be got daft. He's got his England rugby shirt on. Yeah, he has. Yeah, he has. He's, he's not going to be daft. He's going to have a look, isn't he? And then I think he's going to figure out after three minutes, because he's a sharp cookie, what the score is. And then we're going to get a little bit of drama 
provided by Fury, carrying the situation, rolling on the ropes. Go on, son. Go and have a little bit of a tee off on me. Have a little bit of a go. And then when he has it, has it I had enough. Maybe Francis is starting to gas. That's a lot of muscle mass, yeah. man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, we're, to- and we're talking about a lad that is in a discipline, that is used right. to carrying his hands here, yeah. ready yeah. for takedowns. This is a very different but game, man. Do you know what? Yeah. And bouncing on you. On your Tyson oh, Fury's man. got a great boxing IQ, and Johnny, as you know, he'll go in there. He'll, Fury will go in there thinking, I know this guy's dangerous. I know yeah. he can whack a little bit. I'll let him burn himself out. I'll yeah. pick him away. I'll try and break him down with a jab, yeah. slowly yeah. try and steal his soul. And then when yeah, yeah, I start yeah, yeah, feeling yeah. him go, I'll and turn the screw a little bit and, you, and start picking can, it up. That's why I say round, round about six, yeah, seven, maybe, I think it might be, be right. But you can tire someone by not doing very much as well. Yeah. Usyk, Usyk's a master at that. Usyk does that unbelievable. Feet. He just Feeling. stands in a place where you think... Just waving the wand in front of yeah, him a little bit. Like, yeah. Makes you work when you don't want to work. You, you're going 100 mile an hour and the dude's not even got out of the garage yet. You know yeah, what I mean? He's yeah. absolutely going, yeah, I'm, I'll wait for you to go, son, and, <laughs> yeah, then, yeah. and then I'll take you out. And Tyson Fury, listen, Tyson Fury is equally as good as that. I think what we're going to get here is a bigger version, and this sounds dead obvious, a bigger version of what we saw with Mayweather McGregor. Mm. If you remember that, when it all kicked off... This yeah. would be more competitive than that. Do you think? Yeah. Well, I, th- I actually think... Oh, I, think so. I think Mayweather made that look competitive yeah, for about yeah. four do, rounds. Do you know how I know that? Right, and Johnny, you can back me up on this yeah. one. When you're sparring someone and you're playing around with them, you just walk them down, your feet are crossing, your hands are right. He done, he done that with um, McGregor the whole fight, yeah. right? Just where he was literally... Bit. But he was making it look entertaining and competitive, but he was just playing with him, man. He Exhi- was playing ex- with exhibition him. stuff. I, didn't playing even, with I think him. he even said in the build up what round he was going to put, yeah, put McGregor away. Yeah, he did. So. I think he had a big punt on that. Yeah, actually. yeah. When you have pomp and ceremony, when you have critique of events like this, and you have people obviously shedding you know, negative light on certain things. You kind of have a duty of care to the people that have paid tickets, paid for, that have bought into the the casual element of it to kind of make it go a certain amount of time. Tyson Fury, in my opinion, could walk out and finish this within three minutes. I think he could definitely fin- finish it within. Yeah, but yeah, you might be right. Actually, yeah. three round rounds two. would be a stretch. I, I, if he w- if he went straight in, yeah. Mm. The, the Tyson Fury that turned up in the second fight against Deontay Wilder stops yeah, it. Stops it. Him, with man. all due respect to Francis Garner, stops him within three minutes. Yeah, it, that's not going to happen here because he's going to. He has a, a probably a duty of care to his paymasters out in Saudi Arabia. There's a lot of money on the line here. People, he doesn't want people to go in the dressing room after and go. Hang on a minute, I've just paid you 100 million quid. Mm. You, you, yeah, what, yeah, for a yeah, minute's yeah. work? Yeah. What, I mean, what's John, the score? John, you've been in the ring with Fury. What's it like sparring him? How good is he? It's just like he's, he's got. He What's his punch. power like? He's got. He can definitely whack. He can punch. He's got. He's got the elusiveness. He's big. He's tall. Like you're thinking, right? What should I do? I'll, I'll, I'll shell up and try and get on a back foot. No, he'll just. He'll just pepper you to death. You go forward. He's a great counter puncher. He's got an answer to everything. Mm. Your best bet is to take boxing out of the equation as such and rough him up. Take it take it like a little Use street fight. Yeah, when I was in guy. it, when I was sparring him, I thought, right, I'm, I've got a rugby background, probably got a little bit of a lower centre of gravity, rough him up, get on his chest and then just make it all short, sharp stuff and that's the best. And that was only sparring him three or four rounds. And Gannon's got to go whatever this is, 12 rounds. But that's the, the, the blueprint, is, isn't it? For, yeah. for, for, that's the blueprint. But for a short for period of time. Garner because that's his style. Yeah. yeah. And that, you know, him. similar sort of height, low, rough. Bit of grappling. And I saw Francis Ngannou, actually, when I saw him warming up and I saw him in a bit of training and stuff like that, the way that he was working with a body Ducking. and, and the, say that he, the way that he was stance was and everything else, yeah. going, Tyson's got this right here. Yeah. He knows what he's doing, yeah. as in Mike Tyson. He knows what he's doing yeah. here because technically, tactically, he's teaching yeah. you the right thing. Whether you can implement that yeah. is a different story. And there is, there is merit to the, the the point that a lot of people are saying he'll, he'll throw shots in an unorthodox way where he hasn't been trained necessarily as a boxer so that's another thing you've mm. got to be careful of and that could play in his advantage um, listen I'm giving it's a 1% chance but it's still you've got to work with what you've got haven't you? mm-hmm. and he's always got there's always a chance when you're 15, 16 stone plus man sure. just, just look at that picture now right the, it's two, iconic it is iconic the, two gentlemen that are obviously in this main event are eye to eye nose to nose as the referee is about to give them their final instructions the uh, the uh, anthems I've all finished. They've all uh, cracked on. They're all about to get out of the ring and this is about to uh, to get underway. Tyson Fury is about to go and do Tyson Fury things. The majority of his feel, he's wearing green shorts, looking a million dollars, doing Tyson Fury things, bouncing light on his toes. Where uh, The reality of this situation is about to dawn, you would think, yeah. on Francis Ngannou, a man that has, you know, swam, mount- swam oceans, climbed mountains to get himself to this point. He's there Th- now. This is it, son. Roll 
that nice. And I tell you what, the camera's just been uh, put. For, oh, here we go. Uh, the camera was just put on uh, Alexander Usyk straight away. Yeah, pushing him away pushing on Alexander Usyk straight away. And he just said, "Get the camera out my way. I need to watch what the heck's going on here." Because you've got a feel for Alexander Usyk, who is obviously ringside watching this particular fight. His dream of becoming the undisputed heavyweight champion of the world is kind of on the line a little bit here because, as Johnny said, Spence, that one percent mm-hmm. chance for. Uh, to... I think this is over and around. I've got to tell you, no, I don't actually. I, I actually think that Ngannou started quite well and he's a solid sort of base look about him. I don't think he looks too bad here. To be fair, I think he's holding his body like I think he's holding he's holding something to the ring quite nicely. He's, he doesn't seem to be overruled here. The size difference, though, is absolutely... I think give it four rounds as well. Monumental. The cardiovascular it? side of it. When you've not boxed, when you've Wait, not been in a I mean, boxing look, fight before can, in your life. Yeah. The, the cycle... The, the, it's the captured the all, though, isn't it? Yeah, it has. Mate, That's listen, what I'm saying. I've just seen him hit him with two clean do. white hands. Fury hit him straight away, one, two, and then he hit him again, bang. And, bang. and what happened? Nothing yet. Yeah. <laughs> but <laughs> you can only take... Listen, take... Yeah. <laughs> You got me there, but the, three or four. The interesting thing there, I mean, in that first exchange there, and this is a very difficult thing to do with Tyson Fury. We experienced this a little bit in the Deontay Wilder fight. It does take a little bit of time to get his timing, to get that range, to be able to get your feet into that situation. Don't forget, the fella in the black shorts, Francis Ngannou, he's making his professional boxing debut yeah. against the best heavyweight on the planet for the majority of people. And he's going to fall into a lot of his stuff. Right now, he's fresh. The cardio's looking good. He's got a decent posture about him. He actually looks, to an extent, that he that he knows that he's been in the gym doing a bit, Spence. Yeah. I've got to tell you, mate, got to pump holding side. himself well, There's a little one to the body, little right to the body. He's holding himself well. He's making Fury he think in there, John. You can see that. And he's like, holding Fury's, the centre. You know what I mean? Like Fury's sort of like popping away, doing what we expect. He's moving around the perimeter of the ring, carrying the left hand low, just misses with a right hand there. But what he's doing, Fury, is he's being made to think. Yeah. And Garner's doing a better start here. I'll give him credit yeah. because he's doing better than what I expected. And I like the way he's holding his hands out a little bit. That's an extra little line yeah. of defence there because he's got to reach around his, his guard a little bit. Nice. Good little body shot to the right. Yeah. It's a really interesting, captivating first few minutes. It's about 30 seconds remaining I, of, the, uh, I, of the first round. I honestly round. thought when well, he landed that one-two at the beginning, yeah, I thought he's, right going, he's going for him straight away. He's going to be over, but he slowed down a bit. Mate, Fury just landed a right hand straight on the chin and it done nothing to him, no. Garn. He took it. That's, you know, if he can soak those up and force the pace a little bit, you never know. Um, it's an interesting start because, like I said, uh, a moment or two ago, uh, Tyson Fury was going to come out. He's going to have a little bit of a look and see what what is. I think most people will conclude that shape-wise, um, Francis and Ngannou looks uh, like a, a... Oh, they're having a little bit of chat at the end of the ring, a little bit of back and forth. He looks like he knows what he's doing. There's going to be a point here where that mouth's going to get wider and wider and wider and he's going to start blowing. Because as you rightfully pointed out, gentlemen, a moment or two ago, Tyson Fury makes you work when you don't necessarily yeah. want to work. That footwork, that range, the way that he manages that distance is absolutely exquisite. He's come straight out of the traps. He's landed a couple of big right hands on uh, Francis Ngannou. He's given him a crack a couple of times. The alarming thing is that Francis Ngannou's looked at him, smiled at him and stared him straight down the barrel and cracked on. But I think this is going to come down to... Conditioning, fitness. When, you get, when you're getting hit when you're tired, it's different. When you're fresh mm. for the first round, you That's can right. take it. You're fresh, Great but then point. You, you, you're getting a bit shattered, You like, and you get a boom, and another one hits you, and it's two or three, you mm. get a bit more tired, you're not getting your hands back up, then four or five are hitting you all at once, and that's when it's dangerous. That's the first punch. That was the first one too, wasn't it? We're just looking at a, a, a sort of a rode it quite well, didn't he? Yeah. He rode it, rode it a bit, but... It took the shot. He yeah, took, took the shot well, well, took it well. Fair. Listen, Francis Ngannou is used to being cracked with them, on the chin with them four little ounces. Mitt, them little mitts, <laughs> <isn't they? laughs> little, yeah, 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 yeah. You put it, you, yeah. The fingerless mitts that yeah. they uh, that they're using. Uh, well, they in... like four ounces, aren't they? Yeah, four it's ounces. Crazy. <laughs> have you ever had a, have you ever had a go in them? I've had my brother used to have a four. We used to spar at home. He had little yellow four ounces <laughs> that he used. I said, "Well, you're being a bit cheeky there, aren't you? I've got the twenties on. You've got the fours. <laughs> and did yeah. he have? A, did he have? Did he land anything on you in the, in the little fours? Yeah, when I let him. <laughs> when I let him do it. I call him. Have you uh, have you have you ever done anything in in martial arts? You have I ever done anything in martial arts? No. I thought he's gonna ask me something else. Then. <laughs> he's gonna ask me about my brother. Like yeah, so I used to spar with my brother, but he's four years older than me. All right. Yeah. So the story of my, me and my brother was that my dad used to come in from the pub. Like yeah. you know, it was like one in one Saturday night. Coming from the pub, coming boy boys, come yeah. on, have down a little, come, have a get us down. But I know I'm going down to 
Have a scrap. I'm going to put it politely. I'm, I know I'm going down to get me, me head punched yeah, in, yeah, basically. Yeah. So I'm going downstairs. Let's say like I'm 11, so he's 10 stroke. Oh, sorry, I'm 7. He's 10 stroke 11. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? He's high school, man. That's a massive... Uh, so he's he's man, man strength. Man yeah. strength. Man strength at 11. Man strength. Well, 7 to 11 man is strength. like infant. Like, yeah. infant. Yeah. You're like an yeah. infant, are yeah. you? Or junior to infant, yeah. yeah. Do you know what I mean? So yeah, it was it was a, it was a tough old upbringing. Let's just say that. Did you did you have your own gloves or, or is it one of them? Yeah, we had our own gloves, mate. We, you know, I, I always remember in the summer, your mates used to you get your gloves out. You used to have a little spa in the garden and stuff like yeah. that. Keep oh, it mate, under control. There, there was one time, so my dad done this week in week out, week in week out. I was on the deck, get done every time. Went to bed crying. That was it, done. <laughs> and I think that effectively made me the fighter that yeah, I was. Yeah, yeah. But it was one time when he come down, I saw the shot, I saw the opportunity, cracked him in the right hand. Got his it. head went back, hit the light. It's a light switch off, went back down, come back up, we went off, on, off, on. <laughs> yeah, it got was him. brilliant, yeah, yeah, got him. And that was it, that was, that was, that the, was the, my it moment. It changed. That no, was yeah. my moment. I've actually got a video, Henry's got a video of me, I've cracked him. Like, it wasn't even a hard shot, but you know, it's just perfect timing. He's leaning into <laughs> it, it's in his bedroom, he's nearly hit his head on the desk and he's just missed it, so he's all right. Yeah. What's going on here? Like, a bit of South Pole, yeah. Yeah, they've both got South Pole. Yeah. yeah, they've both oh, yeah. switched into uh, uh, the backhands being, the back left hand, should I say, being the backhands. Um, no, they've got to be careful. Those head, head, so yeah, clashing heads. Listen, this yeah. is my, this is my big worry about this. Right? Is there anyone cut there? The, my my big worry about this. Fury's cut thing. there, boys. Can you, Fury's cut. Are you joking? Fury is cut. Well, at the end of the day, if you're can't going, see. if you think he's I, cut, I, I can't, yeah, he's I, cut. I can't see the clarity of, yeah, uh, of where that is or where that isn't. I'm not, I can't see where it is, but I know this. Which is what he's got to do, Gannon. I've got to tell you, mate. He's having a tough time here, Tyson Fury. It's awkward. It's got to be a bit awkward for him. Yeah, the um, the I'll big, go to the body a bit more if I was Tyson as well. The big worry about the fight that has allegedly been scheduled for December against Alexander Usyk is this. So therefore, if Tyson Fury does get cut, and therefore you can't get medically cleared for that fight, that fight's oh. then obviously going to get pushed back to uh, to a later date, isn't it? Yeah, which is obviously distressing. Yeah. That is, it is distressing. I'm, I'm, I'm certain he's cut there, boys. And there was a little moment of panic there as well. Tyson throwing the one grabbed, twos grabbed and grabbing, throwing the one twos out of range and grabbing. There was not, not, not good range there, was there? Wasn't finding the range. Oh, it's, it's little grades, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. It's yeah. not a major cut. There's not, there's not. No, no. It's just, just a, a little, just a little graze. There, no, it was a little bit of blood trickling there. Just back me up a little bit, here, boys. <laughs> 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 he's cut. He's cut. Yeah, yeah because I, I'm he's human. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> exactly. Listen, not, not, my opinion of this so far... It's not a bad shot there. Nice little left hand there from Francis Ngannou. We're just looking at the re replay monitor there. My opinion of this has not changed because at some point in this fight, Francis Ngannou is going to feel that lactic acid. This is a very different type of cardiovascular um, workout than doing um, a scheduled 25-minute MMA fight, which he normally wins within five minutes with on, in a yeah. four-ounce gloves. So th this is going to be very, very, a very, very difficult... Once this gets past four rounds, it's I think it's demands. going to get really interesting. Right, yeah. Parts of the UFC, you'd be on the floor for a couple of minutes. That demands a different cardiovascular yeah. fitness. Plus, Standing in the same position is is fatiguing. While someone's trying to punch you in the yeah, mush. Yeah. You know what I mean? The, uh, the mental concentration it requires as well. Yeah. I mean, those takedowns in MMA, those wrestling positions, there are certain ways of being able to manage that tank in order yeah. to have a little rest. You can have a little rest while I can sit in this position yeah. for a little while. Are we saying Fury's won the first two rounds there, by the way? Yeah, I think yeah. so. Mate. Yeah. I think he's, yeah. I, I think, think so. he's done enough, but they've been competitive. Right? Yeah, they haven't been like shut out rounds. No, we're not. Like, Listen, I'm not sat here going... Um, Francis Ngannou is being completely embarrassed here. No, he's doing all right. He's, doing all right. he's looking relatively okay. He's taking shots, which, listen, uh, you would anticipate him to be able to do because he's used to taking them in smaller gloves. And he's having a little oh, bit of a go a little go there. That's good. Landed a nice little left hand on uh, on Tyson Fury. Um, Fury, it, it, listen, for those that are obviously not watching this and consuming this via TalkSport, firstly, welcome. You can consume it via our, uh, our TalkSport YouTube channel. Um, but it looks double jab there. Francis and Gunner is growing in confidence, boys. Trust me. Fury is looking slightly disorientated, as in not hurt, but he just looks bit slightly confused with it. He's the one that looks confused, and that is a reverse of what I was expecting. Yeah. Um, do you know what I mean? It looks like a normal boxing match. I, I, he, I didn't anticipate it to yeah, look like a normal boxing yeah, match. Yeah, I, would, I didn't either. I and thought he could have come out all guns blazing. Yeah. yeah. As they just tie up. Uh, in the in the centre of the ring, I agree with what you're saying there. Listen, I'm, I, Tyson Fury is still absolutely in control of this situation he, as he keeps switching between stances. I just don't think he's figured out the rhythm. No, no, he's as not, of yet. Yeah. 
That's all it is, I think. But he, he, even when you look at when he fought Chisora and White, it took a few rounds. Like you said earlier, it takes him, he's gauging, he's gauging all the time. And as that time goes on, it's all playing into Fury's hands. He's just got to... But it's not all 100% comfortable, is it? No, no. And, and the timing is the point. He, he, yeah. he doesn't, like, when you're working a fighter out, Johnny, right, you, you know that you're, you're, you're pot shot in, yeah. you're, you're fainting jabs downstairs, yeah. fainting jabs trying upstairs, trying to draw trying to draw shake. There's a there's a sense of panic after he throws that right hand when he's out of range and he's grabbing from Ngannou from south point away. in particular from a yeah. south boss stance in particular yeah but it's 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 not really working for him like no. there's do you know, oh, oh! Fury's down oh my Fury god Fury is down has just oh happened my god Tyson Fury and this is kind of lending to what you were oh saying oh my god what Tyson have I just Fury witnessed? has hit the deck this is kind of lending to what you were saying two minutes ago Spencer. Where you were talking about him being nervous in that I mid can't range. What I've just seen. He's nervous in that mid range. He's throwing and he doesn't want to it stay in the right. situation. It doesn't look right. He wants to shut the situation down. So, in that particular moment, what we've noticed over the first three rounds of it, even though Tyson Fury's been relatively in control as the, as the natural boxer, Francis Ngannou's counter punching has been. Yes. Ta he's timing it so well. Can you just believe wow. what's just I'll happened? Just, honestly, this I can't is believe insane. it. insane. And Garnu throws a big right hand again, falls short. Well, luckily for Fury, the bell goes. This is the danger. This is the danger. You this, take it this, lightly. You this, cannot take anyone lightly. This is all going to come down to conditioning. Oh, There's absolutely mate. no doubt about this. What what happened? He, he caught him actually with his weaker hand. Was Francis, that the third round? Yes, Francis and Garnu there as counter punched Tyson Fury. Oh my god! When he stared still. Oh my! So god. what happens? No, what has been happening is Tyson Fury's been. Throwing a shot, very. If you think a bit like what Lawrence Akoli, we we fell out of love with Lawrence Akoli in that fight with Chris Bill and Smith. Throwing a shot and hugging, throwing a shot and hugging, and Tyson Fury's been doing that a little bit. All right. What happened in this instance is that Tyson Fury did, threw a shot and didn't hug. He threw the shot, stayed in mid range, and the timing of Francis Ngannou, he's thrown a left over the top. He's clipped him on his temple and dropped Tyson Fury. They've got a little bit of a fist bump. I think Fury needs to push him, put him on the back foot like he would do the same tactic he did with Wilder. You know, well, he's giving him too much uh, respect in a way, I there, think. There's a man that don't look happy. They've just gone no. on the camera's just gone well, up to Alexander Rusik and he's just sitting there thinking, please don't lose this, Tyson. As, 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 I'm looking at a pot of money disappearing here, mate. From the first round, has Ngannou been under any huge pressure? No, really. he's no. held his own. I think he's well looking comfortable. Oh, big right hand and again. I'll tell you what, Ngannou. You've how, got to push him back. How light is Francis Ngannou now looking on the feet? The confidence is starting to flow through the fella's uh, body. He's let, looking light on the feet. Adam, let me tell you what happens, right, well, to a boxer when you see another yeah, yeah, fighter yeah, yeah, cut yeah, yeah. or you get a fighter well, you down, you down, get this pump of it's adrenaline like another 10%. and it gives you another 10%. Look at the feet of Francis and Garner. It's the same sort here? of thing when you're sparring and you're in a flow. It's like yeah. you're in a flow state. This is insane. Um, I'm, Why is he giving him so much? You've got to, he maybe respects that power. Yeah, a good left hook. He's, yeah. he's just listen. Tyson Fury is just trying to get back into uh, Tyson a bit of rhythm, Fury. Yeah. yeah, he's trying to get into rhythm, but he, he doesn't look settled in any particular. But he's, he's he's given Ngannou a lot of respect from the first bell, apart from that one-two right at the beginning. Yeah, yes, that's it. He knows Ngannou is a big is, puncher, this is, and, it, this and is he's already, showing, This is a very competitive fight. Yeah, this is already this more is than a very I thought. Competitive <laughs> fight. I'm looking at the pair of you two. I can't Tyson believe it. Tyson Fury <laughs> is the one that has got panic on his face. I can't mate. believe it. I'm, I'm telling you, Fury on, is Tyson. the guy that looks like he's coming to a new discipline. That is where we're at right now. He does. Listen, he. Come on, he looks a bit out of sorts. He does look a bit out of sorts, and he. Oh, oh my god. He um. He, and Garnu's actually setting traps, guys. He's holding that right hand up, waiting for. Oh, Fury's oh in God. trouble again. You're talking about Tom, uh, KSI. Fury's in trouble You're about again. Tommy Fury, KSI, that being an upset. If that happened, this is bigger. I, I, this is bigger. This is this is this, this is, is bizarre. I can't are, we about what I'm to, are we about to watch Buster Douglas? Oh, good oh, shot no, there. Good right, it's good right cross. That. Good right cross from. This, he's already done a million times better than I ever thought he would ever be able to do. Listen, we're into the fourth round. There's about a minute remaining of the fourth round, and and Francis Ngannou is absolutely asking questions of Tyson. More than Fury. asking questions. Right, I, I'm going to give it to you, boys. Right, we're going into the fourth round, a round which Francis Ngannou is winning. Francis Ngannou wins this fight. We oh uh, wins this round. We're going into round five, and Francis he's Ngannou got a my round card, the last one. He's up. Yeah. Around, he's gonna gas. Nah, mate. There, there, mate, there is, is, I, I am, mate, he's going to gas. There is absolutely no way that Francis and Garnu can continue 
doing this for what is it scheduled for? 10? Is it 10? Ten? Ten? Ten. 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 This is 10. Is scheduled, it, there's absolutely no way that he can continue. Is it Ngannou doing well or is it Fury not being himself? No. I've, actually, right now, listen, Tyson's obviously come in to this with whatever attitude he's come into this, but Francis Ngannou's absolutely. Tyson Fury is. I can't put, believe this. He's not looking uh, what he normally would look like, is he? No, not at all. Francis Ngannou's. He looks compact. He looks like he's not wasting too many stupid movements. He's He looks. He looks. Uh, he looks composed. He's not when, wasting. He's not wasting much, is he? With listen, his movements, listen, all his movements. Round, when, round when, four when, done. When he round switches, four done. Round four to Ngannou. For me, Ngannou is three. He's one point, point up. up. Three two. After four. Yeah. <laughs> no. Three. Three point. He's got three. He's got three. He's a point up. He's a point up. It's ten two, eight and the last round. Yeah. It's two yeah. two. It's two two. We a point. Yeah. So, that's what I mean. Three. Sorry, my. So, yeah. So, yeah. 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 <clears> you know what I mean. Yeah, I know exactly what you mean, yeah, yeah. mate. We're just blown away. We're all a little bit. I'm bamboozled. Yeah. Like I say, he looks is... like he's breathing very heavy. There, there you go, then, right? We are four rounds down. Now. He's already done. He's already done wonders for Milo. He's already. He's already won, really. He's, isn't he, he? he is. He, this is a is story you know I mean? for the ages. What I'm saying is, he's already sort of. No one expected. I don't even this. look at all the group chats going off on my phone mate, right now. What is going on? Let's, oh, have, a, let's have a chat. Listen, we were supposed to. Finish... 141 messages here. 132 messages there. <laughs> we're, I'm not even going to start. <laughs> we're, we're supposed to finish the show uh, now. We can't go anywhere. No, we can't. We can't go oh, anywhere. yeah, I'm just going to leave now, lads. <laughs> See you later. <laughs> so, we're about to enter at round number five. Um, like I said, a penny for the thoughts of France, uh, for Alexander Usyk right now. He's got a fight booked oh. for December, hasn't he? The undisputed He's heavyweight champion. Listen, John, world. Johnny Fisher had a taxi booked, and that's yeah. gone now, mate. This is the thing, the best laid schemes. <laughs> um, exchanges at the start of round number five. Francis Ngannou has absolutely held his own as a yeah. boxer to this particular point. I mean, fair play to the fella. I've watched a lot of Francis Ngannou in four-ounce gloves in MMA. Uh, his development as an MMA fighter has been sensational. The way that he's developed his wrestling game, his grappling game, all those types of things have been top class um, over the years. Um, but this now, after an 18-month layoff, major knee surgery, and, and finding himself in a fight with uh, Tyson Fury, who many would say is the best heavyweight on the planet, is, is a truly interesting situation because he looks composed as a southpaw. He looks composed as an orthodox. Tyson Fury looked ragged in the opening few rounds. He looks like he's just got himself together a little bit here now, Tyson. He looks like he's settled down a touch. Maybe he came out with the mindset of, right, I'm going to have to carry this and make this last a little bit. Yeah, yeah. That's what, this is what I said before, the, like a couple of hours ago. You cannot go into a fight with the mentality that we've got, oh, yeah, he's going to walk through it. No fight. Every fight you go in, you've got to have the capacity and the mentality you're going to destroy the other man and has Fury been at 90% 99% is he not 100% on it thinking yeah I'm going to do it yeah. you can't think like that's... that in a fight in your preparation everything you do yeah well listen he that's the only thing talk... I can put it down to yeah I totally agree with you Johnny you know, he's one of these fights where he's got in there probably it's a banana thinking, skin big yeah, big big banana he's skin he's got in there thinking look if I turn up do what I've got to do this geese is going to blow out this geese is going to gas and at the moment he's having a hard night mate a really hard night I like how Gano shaped up he's not wasting like even there just a simple stance not, not moving too much but yeah it's not it's an economical little style he's got there this is, this is listen look I think the uppercut up the middle for Tyson's going to work when he's flapping that left yeah. hook round just he's coming get, he's getting a little it. bit excited with that left hook now Francis because yeah. that is the shot that, that, that shot you see oh, that there look, Francis that's come the back one. with a good uppercut of yeah. his own but that's the shot I think Fury's got to try and get in on the side of that hook that's just flapping around that lead hook that's not really doing anything agree just come inside that little shift and he's still lucky he's working him out though isn't it I'm telling I'm you I'm fascinated mate, he's not it, and it's only Fury, 10 rounds he's not committing at the moment who's winning this round it's a close oh, round it's Fury. a close round that, that one two there is eye catching yeah Absolutely. That was beautiful Tyson Fury, that. He yeah. uses his feet beautifully. It's bang, bang. And that is classic that we've seen on yeah. countless occasions. That's a lovely jab there. Now look at him. This is looking better now. He is back in the rhythm of being Tyson Fury. The first four rounds, you were like, what are you doing? That's but a lovely... When did he last fight? Was it a year ago? Chisora? Yeah. That's what I mean. That's, yeah. That's, that's yeah. time out the it's ring. time out the ring. But then Ngannou's been out for 18 months himself. Yeah. No, mate, he's been out all his life. He's never yeah, had, he's that's never what I mean. Ngannou's never been there. So I don't know. Know. Well, look, we come to the end of... Fury's round, end of Fury's, Fury's round, there. Fury's yeah. round, right? Yeah. So we've got this all level, yeah? Oh, Cole Frampton, who's working for TNT, has actually got Fury winning every round. No. No, no, no. Well, what, even what, even, even a knockdown round? How's that work? Who's that there? Who are we looking at there? 
Who's that? There you go. You've got Mike Tyson there. Mike next Tyson. to Eminem. Eminem. There you go. That's Eminem. Yeah, yeah. I've been out of the game. I've, I remember him from when I was a school child. I'll reverse that, boys. I've just, I've just in my headset, he's got Ngannou winning every round. Oh. Well, not every round. No, I don't think so, mate. That was a great one, too. That was that was level. Tyson. That We've was signature from Tyson Fury, that one, too. We've got it level, Frampton. He's not a bad judge, Frampton. No, he's a great they, judge. They've all been very competitive. Plus, as well as that, you've got, we've got to consider, and we, we, we've experienced this ourselves in the That in was the a past. Fury round for me. Yes, but yeah. we are watching this on TV. Carl's in the arena, isn't he? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So maybe and he's, he's a... got Ngannou winning every round. And we're chatting to each other, not really, like, every now and then you look away. No, I'm blown away, mate. I'm just all like, I'm, I'm a flabbergasted. You're we're halfway going into round six, and it's all to play for. Oh, and, and, and the WBC heavyweight champ has been on the seat of his pants. There you go. That's the breaking news. For people that are just tuning in, I don't know, maybe you've been out and about, you've been working, you've been enjoying your evening, you've just maybe put the radio on, you've come to the uh, TalkSport Boxing YouTube stream. Uh, we're through five rounds of this Tyson Fury at Francis Ngannou uh, contest. Uh, and listen, we've been very vocal about the situation. Um but Tyson oh, Fury God. was put down in the third round. So dangerous. And it was a legit <laughs> knockdown. It was an overhand left. He got clipped He's on the just... way in for staying in range for a little bit too long. And Francis Ngannou sank him and absolutely won that round. He won the round after that, uh, for the majority of us anyway. Uh, Tyson Fury won rounds one, two, and uh, five on our card. So therefore, we've got it level at the moment. Oh, good to card. But for all intents and purposes, I mean, we anticipated this to maybe not look too much like a boxing contest. A little bit wow from Francis Ngannou coming into the boxing for the first ever time. Good job. He's got to be proud of himself, man. He's I'm athlete. telling you, man. Francis Ngannou is doing a great job here. Like, oh, he's, he's literally oh, whisking by, by a whisker every time. Oh my god! If them shots land, he's just missing Fury. Like he is Keep conducting that jab. himself that's the, that's so well here. The jab's Fury, going well. Fury's the one that looks like the challenger right now. If, if I'm totally honest, mate, yeah. I'm blown away because Ngannou looks like the boxer in there. This round, round six, so I've seen the jab working better for Fury. If I'm trying to stay in part, like impartial yeah, in yeah. what I'm saying, absolutely. Yeah. I'm excited by how well Ngannou's doing, but the jab is working nicely for Fury now, and that could like round eight, nine, ten. That could be a a big factor. It's mm. it, it, listen. The ring IQ, the smarts of uh, of Tyson Fury. At some point in this contest, yeah. we're going to yeah. kick in. If he were, if you know, if he's coming to it lightly, if he's coming to it thinking, ah, whatever. Listen, we're talking about what we were classed the, yeah. the, the best heavyweight. Yeah. He now looks like Tyson Fury. Yeah, he seems to have got himself <sighs> together. All right, he missed time that one. Oh, good shot there. But he didn't miss time that one. That were a beauty. Yeah. But his feet, his movement, he's actually boxing. He's, he's treating it like a proper boxing contest now, yeah. rather than... He slips into a rhythm. He's yeah. lo looking better, heads just clashing. together. I still think Gano's got like a, a, a flurry in him or a, a, a last oh, run. He's not out of this. No, we're not, I'm not saying that at all, but he's got to be so careful because he can obviously seriously whack, can't he? He's a dangerous character, mate. He really is. He's conducting himself really well here, Francis and Garner. And there's, good job, there's good nothing job. in this fight so far. No. Fury, yep, he's having a good round here. In round, what are we in? Round six? Six, six yeah. Round six, Fury seems to be turning the screw ever so slightly, but Ngannou still looks dangerous. Yeah. Right, I'm going to go out on a limb here. I'm gonna, I'm this gonna goes to points. Mate, I'm going to say something mad. Francis Ngannou, through six rounds, has made a better fist of this than Derek Chisora and Dillian White. Yep. Together. He has. he has. Absolutely. He no has. no getting away from that, mate. He's held himself much better than them two. But is that because of this awkwardness they're talking about him not being a proper boxer? Yeah, maybe. Maybe, maybe and, and playing... maybe the attitude of Tyson. Maybe maybe you're yeah. absolutely but right. But you play the, the card you dealt, don't of you? Of course you do. Yeah. And, yeah. and what we're seeing right now is a guy that is applying himself really, really well. He looks a tiny little bit. Not distressed, I wouldn't say, but you can absolutely He's tell. He's feeling it now. Mate, the pace is coming now, isn't it? Yeah. This you is just... the last four. Is it four rounds left? Seven? Yeah, this is it. Yeah. We've got four rounds, to, four rounds left. He's and done it's all superbly. To Yeah, don't worry, mate. Don't <laughs> You've got that, to give him credit. That is how flabbergasted Johnny Fisher is. And I'm sure Fury, Fury will get out the ring at the end and say Fair play, massive mate. credit to Francis Ngannou. You can't mock the man. A proper, proper fighting man. Yeah, absolutely. This is absolutely mind-blowing. For those that, again, who are just joining us, um, he is... Francis Ngannou had Tyson Fury down on the seat of his pants in the, in the third round. He clipped him with an overhand left. Um, I'm sure that people that are in attendance are absolutely having a whale of a time watching this in the arena. Um, and if you're consuming this via TalkSport, hopefully you're enjoying it as well. Um, I've been really impressed with the way that Francis Ngannou has looked so comfortable as both a, a Southport and Orthodox fighter. 
boxing stance, a man that has been used to stopping takedowns, hands a little bit lower, waiting for people to shoot on him and wrestle him and all mm. that type of carry on. No, man, he's applied himself really, really he well. He has. And he's asked some serious oh questions. Oh, my God. <laughs> and he just cracked. At come again. Fury. If I was in Ganu, I'd go again now. I'm telling you, mate. He should have followed that up. Cracked him. He should have followed that up. He's not. He's not felt like he, he's. This, I'm shocked. This is defying all my scientific knowledge of anything about this sweet science. This this shouldn't be happening. Don't get me wrong. Tyson Fury is looking like Tyson Fury again. He's back in control. He's controlling with his feet. Controlling with his jab. But every now and again, he's just getting whacked. Francis. Who'll, who'll come at him from some mad mad position and land beautiful. Really clean, really clean I think stuff. Fury's got to stick it on him a bit. Yeah, yeah. Push him back. He's got to make Like he did with something. Wilder. And I'm not saying he's any of, it's a different fighter to Wilder, but push someone on the back foot, they're not comfortable, are they? No, absolutely they're not. not as comfortable as when you can this call is, the shots. This is an Ngannou round so far. We, we, we're coming up to the halfway point of round seven. One minute, 35 seconds left on the clock. And Ngannou is winning this He's landed winning the biggest shots round. in this round, yeah. The thing, the thing about Wilder and his orthodox shots, uh, unorthodox shots, they all come from an orthodox position, don't yeah. they? Mm. This dude's switching it up. Absolutely. Okay, it's coming together again there. Absolutely switching What's Usyk up. thinking now? Usyk right now is a great point, actually, because I Does don't he think, think... Is he worried I, about the fight coming off? I, is he I, thinking, oh, I'm licking my lips, I've got an easy night's I, work? Listen, I think that Alexander Usyk... Right, oh, Fury's gone down again I there. Was I, that a knockdown? No, I don't think it was. I don't think, he can't count that as a knockdown. No. I think he's fallen into him. I think he's, balance. Yeah, referee yeah. said that it's just an off balance. He's fallen into him. Tyson Fury was obviously on the front foot there, attempting... Uh, to give it a little bit we, uh, with, with Francis Ngannou, but he just fell into him. And Tyson's going yeah, so what is Alexander Tyson's Usyk thinking something. right now? He's not going to be worrying too much right now because it's, he's having a, a tough night, Tyson Fury, to be fair. And that's the, that's the danger when you're going into a fight where, like I said to you before, when you've got a guy that, you know, maybe that hasn't boxed or doesn't know how to box, that's a hard thing to read, man. They're hard, yeah. This dude doesn't look like he he's a novice, though. No. No, he don't. No, he don't. I remember when I met him in Vegas, he was always saying boxing is what mm. I wanted to do. He might he must have trained as a boxer, etc. And yeah. If this is what he's aspired to be, this is what it's all meant to be. But I think Fury's gonna find something in his last three rounds. Yeah, I think if you're he's right. that think, champion yeah, mentality. Yeah. 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 He's gonna turn the screw. Coast it, yeah. I think you're absolutely right. But, but the he's fact done that so we are much, here. The fact that we are at this stage of the fight. I hope I hope Fury's madness. gonna find something anyway. Just to just to Put this all down to a bit of madness. <laughs> <laughs> Did this really happen? I can't. Are believe. we dreaming? You know what? This is insane. Um, it's just gone ten past uh, midnight, in, uh, and you're listening to Talk Sport. Obviously, we are streaming this live. You can watch along with myself, uh, Spencer Oliver, yeah. and Johnny Fisher. I am just having a little bit of uh, a nausea at social media, just to see how people are perceiving um, this this fight. Whether people are I'm I'm all level after seven rounds, by the way, boys. Mm. That's, I've got it all level. I, do you know something? I don't think I can argue with that, mate. I've got it all level. <sighs> what, what are we saying online? What What are people saying? Um, there's a lot of people. I think because the the, the 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 danger of this regarding the scoring of it, right? Because Francis is doing so much better than anybody anticipated. I think it's very easy to say, "Oh, he must have won that. Oh, he must have won that." Well, no, he's doing better. Absolutely, he's doing better than anybody anticipated. But you've still got to score the clean, yeah. effective work that yeah. is going on with each individual round. I agree with everything that you boys have said. First two rounds, I thought Tyson Fury, even though he looked a little bit shaky, I thought he did enough with the clean, effective work on the jab to, to get that job done. The knockdown changes the momentum of the fight. It gives uh, Ngannou a boatload of confidence. That's a 10-8. Then you have another 10-9 in favour of Ngannou the yeah. next round. Fury comes back into it. But after off the last two rounds, I'd probably give one to Fury, one to Ngannou. I might have Fury slightly up here, but Ngannou's having a right old do at this. You've got to give oh the my credit. God, He's Ngannou's right pouring it on God. again. This is insane. He's overshooting that backhand a bit. Yeah, Fury. Fury's... There's, there's a Everybody slight desperation about what he's doing right now. What I'm saying is, like, you know, it's not the Tyson Fury we know. It's not the Tyson Fury, you know, that is having it all his own way. He's comfortable, works fighters out. You know, it doesn't... He's, he's made a good. Weird. He's had a good go at it. It's Whatever weird, happens, mate. as you said, Chisora, White, he's up there and putting as as good, if not better, performance than them two. He um, 
the thing as well that has really impressed me, as well as obviously his, his conditioning and various other things, the way that he's holding himself, the way that he's managing to time, he doesn't get it every single time, but the way that he's timing Tyson Fury from either stance with his lead, either his left or his right hand, whatever yeah. way he's standing, is absolutely beautiful. I like the left to the body as well. He's got oh, 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 mate. oh, good shot there from Fury. Nice yeah. right uppercut, but Ngannou took it well. Come back oh, with a beautiful God. one, two of his own. He's out. I'm, 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 I'm telling you now. Oh, Good big shot, right great again. shot, great shot. This is... This is a great fight. How's in God who's taking this? And this he's is a great back. fight. This is a... Oh, mate. Oh, mate. This, this oh, my is, God. This oh, is, my oh, God. Fury's in trouble. This is an absolutely... Oh, my God. He's turned into a ding-dong. This is a Francis Ngannou round. I don't know how you've got this scored. Ngannou's winning this round. Ngannou is having a right old do here. Oh he God. needs one clean haymaker to absolutely send the boxing stratosphere into oblivion. This fella is about to blow the whole God game does. to pieces. What round are we in? Eight? eight. I've lost track. I've lost Two more rounds. Six to eight. He does, listen, he's tired. I can tell that he's tired. Yeah, but Furious looks tired as well. They both look absolutely shattered. Listen, if, if there's going to be a lot of questions off the back of this, man. Oh, oh my God. good shot again there from Ngarnu. This is an Ngarnu round, guys. Of course it is. I think in the first two rounds, what we established is that Francis Ngannou has got an absolutely unbelievable chin. He got caught clean on a couple of yeah. occasions. And a mental he? fortitude as well, to mm. keep coming, sitting in that pocket. I he's, don't hold, know he's held the centre the whole time. He is, Fury has not made a dint in him. He's caught him. There's no doubt about that. He's caught him. He has not deterred him at all. At all. He's not put him off. You, you were right in what you were saying, Johnny. When we, when we experienced the Deontay Wilder fights... What we saw with, the, with Tyson Fury is that he managed to pu to bully the bully. He managed to push yeah. him back. He yeah. managed to make him go he in a way that's that the game plan he, he had didn't want to go. He's hit him clean. And he has not deterred him in any way, shape or form. I, Spence, I, 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 can't, I can't believe it. I'm even saying this, guys. But I've got eight rounds down and Garnu won up. Going into the ninth round with two to go... I've got Francis Ngannou one round up. <laughs> Am I way out here, guys, or what? I mean, what's no, going on? Who's saying what? No, that's his round. That was a few, that was an Ngannou round. Wow. Setting the pace, coming forward. Yeah, Fury came back with a good few shots, but Mate, he was, he's he catching him more frequently. Mate, this is absolutely... We've got two rounds, yeah? So six minutes, in six minutes' time... Look, three or four shots there. I, I I'm not, telling you, it's a close fight, this one. Mate, I know this is... The only thing I can put it down to is, is Fury being 100% focused on this. This is a great shout, John. I don't it's think a great shout. But, but again, this... this is is what, he built into this hype of all the boxing community saying, oh, it's a... Is he believed it himself? That's the only thing I can well, put it down to. It, He's still got two rounds. Mate, still got six minutes. Do you know something? All that, yeah. All these, all these questions will absolutely come out in the wash. There's no doubt about it. But all we can do is judge the What's facts on? that is right in front of us right now. The heavyweight champion of the world is currently stood against the geezer that has never boxed before. And the geezer that has ne never boxed before is, as of the start of the ninth round, probably up in the fight. There are two... And he's just clipped him with another overhand left again. Yeah. Every single time he hits him with that shot in, in Garnu on Fury. Fury's doing a good thing here, though, with that jab. That jab has been landing quite frequently in this round. Oh... Yeah, but Ngannou's dangerous. <laughs> He's dangerous, John. Oh. Yeah. oh. Do you not know what I mean? That, that's like the Tyson I know, the one, the, yeah. the, the big shot. Yeah. Where's the jabs. rhythm? Where's Why, the rhythm? And again, do it again, more and more. He has to up the pace, mate. He, he can't just... That's the jab. That's he the jab. Has, mate. He's, let, he's letting it go too close. But has he, has he, has he, he got the go capacity to, the to up the pace? Here. Has he got it? Has he put it in? Has he put the work in? Do you, well, know, what, do you, know, the, do you know what the mad thing about this is? This is the, this is, this is the mad thing. The... Tyson Fury is brilliant at switch uh, fighting out of orthodox and, and south switch, right? switching stance yeah. which, which which obviously confuses a lot of his opponents and they're, they're not used to him being fighting a fighter that is equally as good right or left handed the thing that has, has a, surprised me tonight is how much Tyson Fury is confused with Francis Ngannou yeah. out of a southpaw yeah. stance. Well, Ngannou's been doing what Fury does, switching orthodox southpaw, orthodox southpaw, but he's probably better He's holding the, the centre. He's he... holding the centre of the ring. <laughs> <laughs> what is going on? Oh, mate, you just can't write this. He's holding it. Wow. Fury can push you back. He's a big, strong unit. He's 19, 20 yeah, stone. Yeah, but everybody's getting can clipped whack. there, John. He's getting clipped. This is... I've got to be honest, boys, right? 
Who's winning this round, by the way? I don't know. Cost. It's not a lot in close round. It's maybe very... just Fury. I don't know. A few it's... more jabs flicking in his face. It's... I don't know. But the, is... some judges don't just think, like, they don't really count. That, like, if there's nothing no. on the end of the jab, they're not really... Yeah. They like the big shots, aren't they? They're yeah. professional judges. This... That's a good jab. Listen, I was... That's I... it. Keep it. <sighs> Keep it there. At the, I can imagine in about three and a half minutes time... He's winning this round, Fury. I'm going to have to throw an apology out here, right? Because... I, I was genuinely it's a close down. fight. Man. So I was, was I. Mate, I was down on the fight. I was like, what is this? So was I. This, this has been an entertaining fight. This has been more entertaining than watching Tyson Fury I, against Terry Chisora. I totally agree. A million percent. Right, wow. boys, we've got 10 seconds left in round nine. Yeah. A round that has gone very close. I'm going to level this round, round off. Are you going to go Fury round? Fury round for me. Right, so we go Fury round. I'd agree. It's a Fury okay. round. It's got right, so agree. this is where I'd we're agree. at, boys. This is where we're is at. It all to play for. So I'm writing the scores there. <laughs> Are we level going into the last round? We've got it level going no, into mate. the last round. No, We've got it level going into the last round, boys. This is oh. this is it. The WBC heavyweight champion Chinese. of the world mate. against the UFC former heavyweight champion having his first professional boxing match. We've got it all level going into round 10. Should mate. he give him his belt? It, I know that it's not on the line. Oh, my days. I can't should believe he, I'm saying Should this. he give him his belt? Is the belt not on the line? No, it's not on the line. Yeah, it's, uh, they've got a WBC special belt. Look so at no, Usyk. No. Usyk's watching this going. I need to process all this. Oh, oh, and the only way to process this is what is going on. Usyk is there thinking, hmm, okay. I'm licking his lips a little bit. Well, but... I, I think he might be a little bit nervous, mate, because... Mind you, does the fight still happen? Well, his WBC title's not on the line. It could be a rematch. It's an argument for a rematch, yeah? It, mate, it will be. Mate, there's nothing in this fight. This is absolutely... Come on, Fury. Crazy, man. Do it, man. Come on. This is... <laughs> <laughs> Just pull it out of the bag. There's nothing in it. This is... This... Gypsy King, come on. Wow. Wow. You've got to give kudos oh, to mate, Francis sake, and Gannon. Listen, you have, mate, but for the sake of boxing, we need Fury win here. Um, here we go. Three minutes remaining. Um, I think with one thing's for certain, I as well, I've underestimated Francis and Ganu. Well, I think everyone did. But everyone we, it's the not knowing anyway. No one knew what we was going to get, did we? But you're just going on the history, yeah. you know? And, it, you know, we got to remember Tyson Fury's the best heavyweight of our era right now. You know? Take all that into consideration. Mate. Right, match Francis and Ganu. What? Daniel, De, Daniel Dubois versus Ngannou. How do you see that going? How do you see uh, Joshua oh. versus Ngannou now? On this, he's finding himself right in the mix on with this, all them top he's guys. In the what mix. is he doing? This is crazy, man. He's ripped up the whole script and he's absolutely thrown himself in the mix. How do you think Ngannou does against Joshua? How do you, you think, think he... Ngannou does against Johnny Fisher? Yes, yeah, what I mean. <laughs> I'm excited to knock him out of the round. <laughs> I still will. Uh, yes, exactly. Listen, yeah. right, we've got two minutes, right? This is tight. If you're Francis Ngannou now, you th I, I Mate, personally think you absolutely roll the go dice. Go for it. Roll it. Just windmill just, it in. Just win round the, the sides. Win but push him, rough him up. Shoulders, elbows in. To be fair, for our listeners that can't see this, yeah. Tyson Fury is the one on the back foot. He's yeah. the one yeah. working around the perimeter and of the judges, ring. And Garnu like is holding the centre. You hold the centre of the ring. That's a core thing that judges look for. Absolutely. And Garnu just switched southpaw as well. Mate. This is something Tyson Fury is not used to either. The, the awkwardness, the switching just of stance. That. Mate, what is... What who's winning this one? It's what, nothing. This, nothing's, nothing's, happening. Round. nothing's happening. Nothing's in it. Someone can nick this round just with a one-two or a, good a little, big shot. Yeah. A body shot even. Just something a little bit eye-catching will win this round. Look at Johnny. He's absolutely... I can't believe it. <laughs> <laughs> Mate, this is... No Eddie, Eddie, Eddie's, Eddie's, been saying, Eddie's been saying I'm knocking and getting out in a round. <laughs> <laughs> maybe two. Oh, yeah, maybe, maybe two now. Maybe, maybe two. This is... Listen, nobody anticipated this. The whole uh, the, good Francis jab, good jab. absolutely is not the respect. Yeah, but that ain't winning the round, John. That no, jab. Do you know what I mean? We're, we're not. We're, we're I not think at if that I was a Gannon, now. throw that loop in Tommy Morrison left hook. Right Go for over. it. Bang. Fifty oh. seconds, man. Fifty seconds. That's to it, man. You've got a minute. Minute. world. They've got go. to be shouting that in the corner now. Go, 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 yeah, do it. Good uppercut, good oh, uppercut. Oh. Fury misses with a wild right. And Garnu... Oh! oh Superman. Jumps. He went for a Superman punch. Oh, my God. It's just Fury's timing Mate. looks a little bit out, doesn't it? For, for and Garnu done the Superman jump. I love it. I love it. He's got full MMA on it. He's gone 10 punch. rounds with the heavyweight champ of the world. Mate. Oh, he's, he's switching, gone 10 he's rounds. It and he's, he's not loving it. He's, he's gone 10 rounds. Forget the result. He's gone the distance. Mate, the, he's done the listen, Rocky Balboa. He might, have, he might have pulled off the biggest shock in heavyweight history. Go. Bigger than seconds. Mike Tyson versus Buster Mate, Douglas. This Tokyo is... 1990. 
can't believe he's gone the distance. This is the maddest mate. thing. Mate, uh, yeah, but has he won it, John? Mate. Has he won it? I mate. don't know. Oh, mate. oh my God. I don't know There's what, nothing in it. I think they call it a draw. Oh, my days. Hold wow. your breath. Hold your breath. We'll be back in a minute oh, Wow. with the result. and weave your way through three hours of knockout radio fight night on talk sport the home of boxing um right let's just try and uh process what we have just witnessed um it has just finished in riyadh saudi arabia uh where tyson fury and francis Ngannou uh have had a, a boxing uh, contest and it was a boxing contest. Absolutely, Francis and Garnu has exceeded the expectations of every single person, absolutely myself, going into that fight. I owe him a massive apology because my word, the work that you have put in, man, to get to that level was I, absolutely I do as well. So do I. Um, from a Tyson Fury point of view, did he put the work in? Listen, this is, these are questions that are going to be asked to him in the aftermath of uh, all of this, of course. It feels um, an incredibly close fight. Of give it to Fury, I think. Tyson Fury has his hand raised and he looks like 
he has been given the decision. From what I'm hearing there, that might be a split decision because Tyson, because Francis Ngannou raised his hand at one particular point as well. I'll just try and get some comfort. Uh, 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 split split decision. decision. So we've had a split decision, a 95-94 Ngannou, a 96-93 Fury and a 95-94 Tyson Fury. Tyson Fury wins via a split decision. There are boos ringing around the arena in Saudi Arabia. Um, listen... That was an incredibly close fight. I personally thought that Tyson Fury might just have edged those last two rounds when, obviously, Francis slowed down, gassed the touch. But right up until the eighth, there is absolutely no question that that was razor, razor That was a tight close. fight. Listen, that was a tight fight. It was a subjective scoring that. It could have gone one way or the other. What was you looking at? The knockdown, for me, could have been... Could have been so important in the winning and losing of that contest. It's gone, Tyson. The boxing gods were with Tyson Fury tonight because that was close, boys. That yeah. was very close. Absolutely. Thoughts, Johnny? Oh, just... Uh, I'm just thinking... For me, it's about how, how well Francis and Gannon have done. That's all I'm thinking about. I've... Uh, I think all of us underestimated yeah, what he'd done there. I thought he shaped up lovely, holding the centre of the ring. He knocked Tyson Fury down. Do you know what? He knocked Tyson Fury down. Did Dillian White do that? No. Did no. Derek Chisora do that? No. Yeah, but he, yeah, he, he, but he, made, he made life very difficult for Fury. Now, do you know what I want to do? Because obviously we're here and we're working the way that we're doing and we're keeping an eye on it. I want to go home, re-watch that again because that was yeah. razor tight, man. It yeah. was. And I still don't know what way that went. Do I you know that? Fury's jab came into it the second half of the, the fight, bucket. pinging it a little bit, and then judges look at that and they, they like that. Some judges don't just score it in that way, but he was starting to... Get, in, get into his rhythm a little bit. He's had a long time out of the ring as well. I know we talk about Nganu, but he's had, he didn't fight since Chisora last, last year. Listen, the facts are this. Tyson Fury's had his hand raised via a split decision in Saudi Arabia, but the star of the show by an absolute country mile is Francis Nganu. He absolutely showed up tonight and showed that he can box. Going into this contest, I said Francis Nganu has got one opportunity at the big time of boxing. I personally think he's just announced himself. There is an opportunity, if he wants, to maybe have a dance again in the boxing world. Yeah. I'm sure there'll be a clamber for people wanting to see Tyson Fury and Francis Ngannou go at it again. Anthony Joshua comes into the conversation. Yeah. Very sort of big How does he do against that? How does he do against... No, nobody knows the answer. The world is your oyster, Francis Ngannou. Welcome to the party, my friend. The lunatics let you into the asylum and you absolutely ran wild I'm going to go home I'm going to process what I've just seen I'm going to have a good sleep and I'll come back tomorrow and a Chinese <laughs> with some uh, more considered thoughts a penny for the thoughts by the way of Alexander Usyk thanks for listening we'll catch you next time